Good morning, uh, councillors, CEO, uh, CEO over there. Uh, directors, Pam, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. The traditional custodians of the land on which we're privileged to call home and the land on which we gather today, the Yui people represent a human link dating back over 2,000 generations as part of one of the oldest living cultures on the planet. We pay our respects to the Indigenous Elders past and present and recognise their continuing connection to our land and our community. So councillors, uh, this council meeting, as you know, is being streamed live, recorded and published in accordance with the council's standing orders. But unfortunately, no members of the public are able to be with us today because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But we welcome our uh, viewers on our live streaming in, uh, in our Facebook channel and also on our council YouTube. So welcome to this first meeting of this council in terms of ordinary business. And uh, the member for Dawson has asked to uh, address the council. We would normally have all of the elected members along to our swearing-in ceremony, but of course we weren't able to do that uh, this year. And uh, so it's a pleasure to be able to welcome the member for Dawson to uh, our council. Thanks, George, we, uh, we normally allow three minutes. <laughs> so, um, would you like me to stand or, uh, or how would you like to you, You're welcome to address the council however you wish. Okay, I can understand. Well, thanks very much, uh, Greg, to you and to your newly sworn in councillors. Uh, firstly, congratulations to each and every one of you on your election wins. Uh, congratulations to Greg on being in the envious position of not being contested. That's a, uh, a, certainly a, a very great endorsement <coughs> from uh, the community that uh, people of our region saw fit um, to not even put in a single person against you. And, uh, when the political game can only be envious of that. To Karen on your election as uh, Deputy Mayor, congratulations. Uh, I um, was in this uh, same position that you are some uh, 16 years ago now, along with uh, one of the returning councillors, Alison Jones, at the time. So it's good to see you uh, here, Alison, as well. Um, Karen was the Mayor of Serena, I think, at that time, and. Uh, Russell was one of my constituents for the division I represented out at Walkerston, so uh, our times have, have changed. Uh, but it is an honour. Um, it is an honour that uh, you will love, no doubt, for those new councillors who are uh, on local government for the first time uh, and on Mackay Regional Council for the first time. It's also uh, a responsibility. I remember uh, the week after I was elected, someone rocking up at my door at 5 a.m. knocking talk about the street light not being appropriate. So uh, uh, you might not have got that knock in yet, but expect it. All sorts of things will come at you and uh, the demand is great. But uh, today I just wanted to say congratulations to each and every one of you. I look forward to working and continuing the good working relationship that I've had with uh, Mackay Regional Council and all of my local councils. Uh, uh, Mackay Regional Council with Sunday Regional Council, Burdick and Shire Council, and even a bit of Townsville City Council in my uh, electorate. Um, but the relationship that I've had with, with Greg and, in fact, with the whole council has been fantastic. Um, we've been talking and working on uh, the concept of a regional deal, and hopefully that will be something that continues into the future, along with um, what I think now needs to happen for our region is a look at uh, what we can do for recovery um, for our region, which is probably very well placed, more than most regions, post this COVID-19 pandemic situation. And I know Greg and the council have certainly got a lot of thoughts about that. So I wish you well on your endeavours over the four years to come. Look forward to great things from Mackay Regional Council. Uh, congratulate you once again and thank you for the time. Thank you very much, George. Thanks very much for coming along. You. Don't have to stay. The CEO oh, probably yeah. will probably uh, <laughs> kick you out of that chair. <laughs> Thank you very much, councillors. I declare the meeting open for for the first ordinary meeting of the, the new council, and I welcome Reverend John Gilmore to lead us in prayer this morning. Reverend John, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come praising you for your love of us. Send Jesus into this world to draw us to you and to teach us that we are made in your image and 
called to care for others as Jesus did while on earth. Father, send your Holy Spirit to be present in this meeting of the Mackay Regional Council as it begins the work of leading and supervising the Council's work. May they know your leading and guidance so that the people of Mackay might be well served in all that is done. And at this challenging time of COVID-19, we thank you, Lord, that through the thoughtful arrangements made by the previous Council, the State and Federal Governments, we've been spared the excesses that other countries and areas have experienced. Guide this council as it works through the revisions of the rules and gives opportunity to each and give opportunity to each council to impact this community so that more restrictions can be lifted and a more normal lifestyle be implemented. Give to all members of this council the continuing desire to serve the residents of Mackay fully and to bring the diverse groups of people who make up this region together so that we might all help our neighbours and grow the whole community. Give to the officers of the council a real sense of the worth of the jobs they're doing and support them in these difficult times as they seek to support the work of this council. Bring us all to understand your leading in all things. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. John. Thank you very much. Okay, councillors, the... Um, the agenda, nobody's absent on council business, no apologies. Are there any condolences? No condolences to offer, no conflicts of interest to declare, no conflicts of interest. Let's move on then to the uh, confirmation of the minutes of the previous meetings of the council, the ordinary meeting on the 12th of February 2020. Uh, can somebody who was present at that meeting move that those minutes be accepted? Moved by Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Bonaventura. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Post-election meeting of the 22nd of April. Somebody moved that those minutes be accepted. Councillor Mayu moved, seconded by Councillor Mann. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. Let's move on to, uh, well, there's no business arising out of those minutes that we've been uh, advised of. There's no mayoral minutes, so let's move on to the consideration of committee reports and recommendations. And first of all, in correspondence and officers' reports, the Office of Mayor and CEO report. CEO. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Good morning, councillors. Um, we do have a lot of monthly reports in this one meeting. What we do do is typically split them, but you've got all the reports for till the end of the March this month. So, um, obviously, this is a report to the end of March, um, just to let you all know that most of our critical closures around libraries, MEC, pools happened on the 25th of March. COVID-19 started to impact us about mid-March, but the closure of some of our key infrastructure happened towards the end of March. So, a lot of the data isn't impacted um, by that. Um, what you will see is in April there's been a whole different story that we'll talk about next month. Um, uh, this is the safety quarterly report, just again for the new councillors. Uh, we do a quarterly report in the Office of Mayor and CEO every quarter. So the, the safety stats in this are for the last quarter of January, February, March, through our summer period. Um, and that's the, all the numbers around our lead and lag indicators. And you, as you'll notice, we haven't had any LTIs uh, in recent times. Our lost time injury frequency rate is tracking down. However, you will note that um, the number of lost time injuries this year is tracking quite well compared to historical, but the number of days lost from a couple of those injuries is quite high. So we have one employee who's still off work who uh, around the middle of last year missed a step as he's getting out of the grader up at Youngler and uh, bumped their head. Uh, they're still off work, so that contributes 155 days for that one injury. Um, so that is why the number of days are quite high. Um, we're going to have talk about the... Uh, strategic financial report later on in the agenda. Um, we were tracking well to our budget our plan at the end of March of a small surplus. Uh, things have changed, uh, a little thing called COVID-19, but we'll talk to you about that as a re-forecast item. Uh, our local disaster management group went to stand up in late March and continue to be in that phase. Um, and our uh, emergency management team and plenty of other people in council are heavily involved on a daily basis through that as a result of that. Um, we'll talk about the capital report shortly, but um, during this period up to the end of March, our capital projects were tracking okay. We did have some weather impact on a couple of projects, but generally uh, through up to the end of March, it wasn't too bad. Uh, and we're going to talk to you about the budget process for 2021 that's also had to be rechanged as a result of COVID-19. Thank you, CEO. Questions? Councillor Mayor. So, um, electronic page 8, um, we're noticing that traffic management email has been updated. Just wondering if that was a result of incidents. 
CEO. Uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Mann. So that was around speed. A lot of it was to do with speed. So we tried, um, I'll call it the smiley face digital board. Um, and I'm not sure if that's still up. Uh, um, actually, it's not, no. So that was around, um, I don't think it was about complaints. I think we were just starting to get a little bit concerned about a number of incidents around speed in that depot. Um, so we, we did that as an initiative to try to do it. We are, as a result of the new workshop that you'll remember that we constructed for a couple of million dollars last year, that has changed some traffic management routes around one way. So that is part of that audit as well. Couple more. So Kelsey. on electronic page 13, I'm just asking if there's any incidents of giving to staff being redeployed to different areas of council. So yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Men. So we've started redeploying some staff around the MEC and libraries and some other areas that have been closed down from late March. Um, there has not been any uh, major incidents. I, I will say there was one employee working from home who is in our high risk category who had a significant reaction to a vanilla slice. So as a result, I've banned all sweets at home and at, at work as a result of that. Uh, in all seriousness, she had a, a quite a severe action. The ambulance had to be called. So that was working at home. Um, so yeah, so no, there hasn't been uh, anything. We're, we're going to great lengths. <coughs> we're redeploying staff in other areas they're not familiar with to make sure that they're brought up to speed, inducted, so we don't put them in a high risk situation. And Just one more. Certainly, <laughs> Councilman. <laughs> Um, electronic page 26 in relation to the Serena Sugar Shed um, business analysis. Who's that? Serena Sugar Shed business analysis, analysis, yes. And I just wondered when Council, that might be presented to Council. See ya. Uh, thank you. Um, we have the draft, Council Mayor. We're actually ready to uh, send out draft and we're going to set up a briefing in the next four to six weeks. And we'll go through that um, that business case that was done by a consultant um, earlier this year. So we'll be coming to you very shortly. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Bonaventura. Just on page eight, I noticed that uh, they undertook some review for duress alarm arrangements in various locations. Without going into too much detail, um, is there uh, an idea of what areas that these may go into? Or are we planning to put some in following that uh, review? Sorry, did you? Yeah. See, uh, yes. Yeah, so the review mainly, uh, Councillor Bonaventura, was around the process after the button is pushed, who it goes to, just go to our after call number to go straight to police. So that was the review. We have um, undertaken duress alarms oh, where they yes. go in the organisation previously as well. Um, so I know you've mentioned Morani Library to me. So the actual staff out there do have mobile ones on their person as well, um, and they have them right now. Um, but Morani Library is also going to get one. Uh, there's already one in the main office there, but there's also portable ones that they currently have as well. So we're quite comfortable with the risk profile that we have um, through mobile or permanent in all our areas. Um, but the review was uh, specifically around um, what happens after you push the button. Very good. Thank you. And that certainly eased my mind around the Morani Library area because I, I was a little bit worried that they did not have one at, uh, probably late last year when I was there. So it's excellent. Right. Thanks, Councillor. Um, further questions? Yes, Wilson. certainly. Just in relation to... Um, no, I'll take that back, Your Worship. I've gone ahead myself. It's, it's uh, the next next item. Thank right. you. Right. OK. Are there further questions? Somebody would like to move the adoption of the broad report. Councillor May seconded by. Councillor Green. Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I, I said to the CEO in um, February after our last meeting, Caretaker mode's pretty easy. Be able to catch up on a few things while, while we're out getting elected. And uh, we returned back to council and the whole world had changed. And I, I really just wanted to, to, this morning, pay tribute to our CEO and directors and the staff that managed the uh, epidemic of the, the, panda, uh, the, the virus um, with no elected representatives in office. And, um, the staff just met the challenge. Lots of things were put in place, lots of considerations are being given to some of the actions that the council is going to take and, and that's being led by the CEO and, and the directors and so I really just wanted to, to make mention of that before I got into some more specifics about the report. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's been a job well done and I know that the team are continuing to work on that on a daily basis. But I think the other part and the important part of the CEO's report and, and we get all of the operational information around um, what's happening there, but I think it's really important that we don't take our foot off the pedal when it comes to the, to the projects and the shovel-ready projects that we've had on the go over a number of periods of time. 
and they're listed in the report there and you'll see the Centre of Excellence is due to be opened in July which is a, a, a very good thing for our region and probably coming just at the right time I would think. Our Northern Beaches Community Hub, we have um, money thanks to um, funding from the Federal Government and we're, we're in the process of acquiring land in that area as well so we're moving along with that as well. The, the Serena CBD revitalisation is um, certainly something that we've been talking to um, federal and state politicians around, um, looking for funding to, to start that project and kick that off in the, in the early stages of planning. And we've certainly moved ahead with the mountain biking strategy, so um, that's really good that that's coming to fruition as well. We just heard this week the announcement of the funding for the new animal facility, animal management facility which is fantastic and that, that will be great. It's, it's certainly in need. It's something that the council has highlighted over a, a period of time. And also funding for our Morani precinct as well. So these things are coming on board just when we need them to be del delivered. And Councillor Mann has already mentioned the sugar shed analysis and we'll get a report on that. So I think overall, while dealing with all of the pandemic stuff, businesses continuing to, to, to run in a very efficient manner. The projects are being delivered and planned out just as we need them to be and to be coming online, I think, just in an opportune time so that we can move from response to recovery in a very short time. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor May. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. Let's move on then to the... Capital Works monthly review. CEO. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, great to see um, we have nearly 500 projects going in our capital list and there's been no injuries to MRC employees in March. Uh, there was one minor asset damage and one contractor back injury, um, but um, it's good to see that we, uh, across that whole program, we haven't injured our employees during March. Um, taking a point from Councillor May, we've made a conscious effort during April and March to keep our capital programs going. Um, a lot, if not most, of our projects employ local contractors who have local employees. So during the COVID-19, we have consciously kept those projects going. We have had some interruptions in some areas. Uh, for example, Queen's Park, Crusade Development's a local company, Shadford, who are doing the path down Harbour Road, Ronsell Drive, We've got Fergus doing, Fergus Builders doing Resource Centre of Excellence, a number of, a rotary lookout is WHF. So there's $20 million just in all local. So we've made a conscious effort to keep that going obviously complying with all the health requirements of social distancing and we continue to plan not to change that. You will notice that at the end of March we've spent 66.1 million and it looks like it's really good against 68 million of forecast but you've also worked out we've got to spend about 50 million in three months so uh, that's not uncommon with what we've been doing in the past where by the time we do design and tenders we heavily load the back end of the year that is the process I'll talk to you all about. As we move forward, we want to change by doing more design early and getting into works like road works and things like that in the dry season rather than the delays that we've been doing previously. Um, and, and focus on that, we plan to come to you in the next couple of weeks for the 2021 budget with a request of about 5 million of pre-design works for the following year. So we get into that pipeline. So we'll talk to you about that in the budget. Um, just to let you know, um, we're expecting to spend with carryovers, about 120 million in capital next year. We'll go through that list with you shortly. The Mackay Tourism Kiosk at the Blue Water Lagoon is um, progressing well. The fact that unfortunately we had to close that down has accelerated that outcome because there's not people there. Um, and that's on track to be uh, finalised by late June. It continues to be on track. Uh, uh, anyone who's driven down to the harbour, that pathway, shared pathway, $3.5 million project, well advanced. And is on track again to be uh, complete uh, in the next couple of months. And uh, Councillor May mentioned the Resource Centre of Excellence. So stage one of that project is actually due to open at the end of May and stage two at the end of June. Uh, it's under budget. So I um, myself was up there with the Executive Officer last week and the project's coming along really well to be a sensational facility. Um, and just Councillor May also mentioned it. I can honestly say that we, uh, we have acquired the strategic land for the Northern Beaches Community Hub as of yesterday. So um, we now own that parcel of land and we'll do some work with that on uh, getting that out and we've started the master planning for that process that we talked to councillors about as well. Thanks CEO. Questions for the CEO? Councillor Bonamajura. Just in relation, on page 39 your worship, uh, just in relation to Queen's Park underspend, could I ask uh, what effect this may have on the finish date and uh, a further question to that is, 
Do we have a June deadline on this job? I recall that we had a June deadline or something on this job. There you go. Yeah, thank you, Council Monitor. Sure, yeah, it was it's fully funded, that $8.86 million from the state, as you probably recall, and the funding agreement does say the 30th of June. So even with the delays, we, um, we've got now some concurrent activities. Some of the delays weren't critical paths, so we've got concurrent activities now going on through April and May. So I'm reliably told by a Director of Capital that we are on track to complete at the end of June. Uh, and under the funding agreement, you've got a couple of weeks after that for the final accrual process anyway. So we are uh, assuming weather is reasonably favourable. Uh, if anyone's been passed, it's rapidly moving along now in the dry weather. Now we've done the underground services. Uh, we are on track to complete at the end of June. You. Did you have a question about the quantum of the under budget item? Oh, just in, no, the quantum is, is written there for us at uh, you know, 946,000 at this stage, but I just wanted to know whether that, uh, that under, underspend, you know, has to be caught up somewhere, Your Worship, and I was yeah. just, that's with my question, that having right. to catch that up with only a limited amount of time left between here and June. Right. So, yeah, no, the CEO's answered that. Thank answered you. quickly. Okay, thank you. Further questions? No further questions, would somebody like to move the adoption of the report? Councillor Mann moves, seconded by Councillor Bonaventura. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I um, made a point of always mentioning workplace health and safety in the last term and I've seen re no reason to change that. So no LTIs in this department since its formation and minimal incidents again given its high risk area of council. So I really thank all the staff for their, their um, attention to uh, workplace health and safety and their focus on it. Um, we did experience some issues with wet weather and delayed deliveries um, of replacement plants, so that attributed to an underspend of $2.1 million on top, in the top five projects. Um, as the department continues to evolve, I think it's commendable to see project management um, framework being refined and the monthly reporting to asset owners being expanded upon. I think that's really important so that things aren't siloed, so everybody knows the status of their project all, at all times. Um, some significant projects have advanced with Gorge Road upgrade and that's been a long time coming and that's been the source of a lot of complaints, especially after wet weather. So that's um, detailed design for construct... Oh, sorry. So that's nearing design completion and also 1.7 kilometres section of Ball Bay Road, again, has been the source of a lot of complaints. So I think it's really good to see that that's... Um, that's uh, nearing design completion as well. Oh, sorry, de detailed design has been done. And it also addresses safety concerns as well. Um, and it's also good to see, the CEO didn't steal my thunder, but it's good to see that um, projects spent to the end of March 66.1 million, which represents 96.2% of year-to-date forecast. We all could read the report and know what's coming, but still, that's a good completion rate. So I'm happy to move the report. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Speaker against? Any other speakers? Speaking for, obviously, Councillor Bonaventura. Correct. Your Worship, I'd just like to mention the uh, sewer and stormwater relining. It's in, our, in the contract service area. Uh, this $2.9 million uh, project of rehabilitation, by re relining these hidden assets, will bring long-term savings. It could be very easy to ignore this maintenance in favour of some visible above-ground works with more appeal. Doing this will pay dividends. First, it keeps our asset in good working order, with the sewerage and stormwater flowing where it should be. But more than that, if we run to failure of those assets, we face a huge repair cost and uh, public discontent. As a councillor, I'm always keen to look at projects like this, uh, so I look forward to a successful completion, and would also ask the Director of Capital Works to keep a close eye on that Queen's Park uh, costs and time frame. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventura. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. 11.3.1 was the Community and Client Services Review for February and March 2020. And CEO, it's great to see the, uh, that Stay Home, Stay Connected program. I think that was an excellent initiative. CEO. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, great to see that the safety performance of this department has been excellent, not only in March, but for the whole year. No OTIs. Uh, this undoubtedly is the directive that's had the most impact on COVID-19 with the MEC libraries, art space, halls, meeting rooms, our community halls being uh, shut down on the 25th of March. Um, as a result of that, that's um, obviously impacted heavily on the budget. You'll see that in the re-forecast. And we'll also, we expect, um, depending on the easing of restrictions, particularly for something like the MEC that has large gatherings, could have a significant impact into 2021. Um, 
A lot of work's been done uh, around on the MAC on refunding tickets that were for bookings. A lot of work's continuing to go on on events that have been cancelled or postponed, working through the contractual obligations around those. There's a lot of events that are happening in this facility. So we're working through that and the team's done a great job on that. Um, the uh, number of community events in March was great. Um, however, April won't look so good uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and the, uh, I would like to say too, the director and the staff in this directorate, given a lot of the assets have been closed down on doing other work, helping through the LDMG, working mm -hmm. through uh, seven of the MEC staff helped mm -hmm. out with a survey of uh, 110 or 113 community groups to help through the human and social groups. So there's been great redeployment of staff to help out the community given the circumstances. Thanks, CEO. Questions for the CEO? Yes. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mayor. You don't um, need to stand for questions, Councillor Jones. You can no? see that. Oh. Thank you, Mayor. Um, look, um, on the community engagement, I, um, I noticed there was a, obviously a range of um, items that uh, our staff have been involved in, and I was just curious about um, one that was called Beach Upgrade Works. Um, I was wondering what beach or what beaches that was um, concerning. The Upgrade Works, the... Uh Oh, I have to take offline. I can't remember. We've had a number of ones that would have been planned through our coastal plan um, processes. So the St Helens Beach one, for example, would have been put on hold. So we'd have to just give you a list offline of which ones. It would be coastal plan related, Councillor Jones. Yep. Appreciate it. We'll send that out, Councillor Jones. Did you have um, another question? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on um, page 88, there's also, um, under health and medical uh, there's some customer requests that's happening there. Um, and it's, uh, there's quite a lot of um, customer requests in relation to public health safety environment. I was wondering what they were, the, the types of customer requests that were being placed. CEO, you've clicked at the director. Director, we can almost see you. <laughs> Are you able to answer that question? I would have to get further detail from you. So would you be able to send out a, uh, a breakdown of of that particular line item in terms of public health and safety and environmental. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. We'll send Thank that around, Councillor Jones. And, and just a further comment on that, uh, in my previous uh, years on Council, I note that uh, customer requests for dogs and um, other domestic animals, as uh, Councillor Bonventura would uh, agree, it usually was the, the line that was quite long and um, had a lot of customer requests in relation to that, but I uh, see there's been a change, so just a comment, Mayor. Thank you. One of the things we have seen as a result of COVID is that people are at home a lot more and their dogs aren't going crazy. <laughs> so we don't get dog complaints as much as we used to do. So there are some silver linings in this COVID. Not many, but there are some. Councillor Mann, so, question. A comment firstly. Um, in regard to emergency relief packages um, with the Serena Neighbourhood Centre. And um, it would just be interesting to see if those applications increase given you know, people maybe having um, lesser hours or losing, losing positions. But I also did wonder on um, page 60, I think it is, uh, 61, Serena Youth Centre. So we went from it being open and really well utilised to now having to deliver um, things online. And I just wondered if that has had an impact with the number of youth that are engaging. So that's more of a reference to the last few weeks? Yes. Okay, yes. so yeah, can, can we answer that? Or uh, take I, that undoubtedly it would have had an impact. I mean, the Director might have some more detail. Director? Yeah, we have uh, absolutely seen... It's making a difference. We've absolutely seen a, a reduction in the mm. amount of youth we are contacting with daily because we're close to drop-ins. So it is a by appointment service at the moment. So that, in effect, has reduced the number of youth. Uh, although we are trying to do some online uh, programs and engagement activities for, for the youth in Serena as well to increase that number. Yep. Okay. Great, thanks. And Director, that microphone is for our, uh, our live streaming. Not, we can hear you. So that's good. Further question? Councillor Bella. Um, Mine's had a very brief question. I had questions that I uh, asked regarding the process with our um, star arrangement with food businesses. I'd just like to ask the, um, through you to the CEO and the director, if we could be updated over the coming weeks 
as to how we're going with the zero stars and the two stars at this point, um, just periodically. Okay, yeah. certainly. Yeah. See so, yeah. Yep. We can do that. Thanks, Councillor Butler. No further questions? Councillor Butler Majura. Just on page 68, Your Worship, and uh, it's interesting to read um, that we've got, there's a, a heading there called Pets Are Part of the Community Too, and it's been a partnership between uh, the local laws uh, officer and our libraries um, uh, about uh, adopting a furry friend and, and <coughs> how best to do that. I thought that was excellent, and I'd just like to know uh, from uh, the CEO or the director, will this restart when COVID settles down? Yeah, good question. Thanks. See you. Yes, it will. Yes. Thank you. Done. Thank you. And just one further, if I may, on page 91, I note that there's been a fairly large increase in the number of surveying and spraying for weeds. Uh, and I'd like to thank those involved. I think it, uh, it brings home the fact that we have got, uh, I believe, a lot of rat's tail out there. <coughs> We've had numerous phone calls on rat's tail grass on roadsides. And just like to make sure that we are doing quite a bit of spraying and not that says surveying and spraying of weeds. So I'm hoping that quite of that time is spraying, not just surveying, because otherwise it will get out of hand. So could someone give me an answer on that one, please? Okay, thanks, Councillor Bonaventura. Are there any other questions? Other questions? Would somebody like to move the report's adoption? Councillor Mann moves, seconded by Councillor Anglet. Councillor Mann. Um, but again, no loss of injury in this department, uh, which is a really good result. Minimal incidents um, also, but I'm um, still concerning that there was five incidents at the library, um, but now that the library's been closed down, that may, well, that obviously is going to alleviate that and hopefully um, give the staff a reprieve from some, from some of that, the incidents that occurred. Uh, food, safety handling work, oops, sorry, food safety handling workshop was held in Serena in February and attended by 27 people representing 10 not-for-profit groups. And I think it was really important to do that given that a lot of not-for-profit groups um, run events. So it was really good information and I believe that a lot of the people that attended got a, a lot out of it, so that was good. Serena Neighbourhood Centre again hosted the Queensland Women's Week and International Women's Day Awards. 200 people attended. There was um, 19 women nominated for awards. Um, and uh, three very inspirational speakers on the night. So again, another fantastic um, evening. Just to say that Councillor May couldn't be there given she was on the, um, the organising committee, but she was in Canberra for the Tourism Awards and we certainly did miss her on the night. Um, community program staff are working with community engagement to deliver a platform for interactive um, activities for people in isolation. And those sorts of things of physical activity, art space programs, online library, very, very important so people don't feel isolated, that we give them the opportunity to, to take advantage <coughs> of those services. Um, and uh, I noticed a comment about art space. So prior to its closure, um, there was a, an artist flew from Adelaide to um, talk about some of her work, Catherine Truman. And she um, commented that she felt our gallery was the most beautiful gallery her work had been shown in while on tour, and I think that's outstanding and a uh, you know, commendation certainly for our staff and for the facility. Um, obviously, we've played a key role in community messaging about coronavirus, um, and Council also shared messaging around economic and social assistance. Again, very, very vital to our region, so well done, and I'm happy to move the report. Thank you. Speaker against? Any other speakers? Councillor Bella, speaking for, obviously. Um, there are two areas I wish to address in the report. The first being um, pest management. It's absolutely fantastic to see the baiting programs and the surveying and spraying for weeds have um, increased out of sight compared to last year. There's an old adage, you know, one year's seeding is worth 10 years of weeding. Um, and that is literally quite true. While I doubt our capacity to actually get on top of some of these weeds, um, the plus side is that we would at least limit the expansion and spread. Um, the impacts, not only to farmland and whatever, to, but to our um, environmental areas is massive. So I really commend the staff on that um, and uh, encourage them to keep going. I'm very happy to see that brown line well above the blue. The other area was the uh, STARS um, for uh, food businesses. Um, that pie chart is extremely pleasing. Um, I was very happy with the, uh, the concept when it was first brought forward. To see so many of our areas fall 
um, in the five, four and three star region and so few, so very few below that is absolutely incredible. Um, and it bodes well for when recovery does start and we do start getting some visitors to the area again. So, um, and not to mention the, the experience of, of our locals that uh, access these businesses. So uh, thank you very much to uh, this directorate for actually um, for bringing this forward when they did. I think it's a wonderful thing. Thank Thanks, Councillor Bobas. Councillor Bonaventura, you're speaking for? Yes, Your Worship. Um, firstly, in relation to Councillor Bella and the, uh, the stars on our uh, places of uh, eating, yes, I, would have been, I was the opposite of Councillor Bella. I was a little wary of that when it first came out and staff will recall that I did raise quite a few questions. Happy to admit now, Your Worship, I was wrong because it is working very well and continues to improve as we go. So. Uh, just in relation to the report, um, firstly, this is, uh, in my opinion, the correct meeting to uh, uh, mention the Sports Expo. Look, this event uh, is a collaboration between Community Lifestyle, Corporate Communications and the MEC staff, and it continues to grow in popularity. This year, 125 stallholders promoting their organisations to approximately 8,500 visitors on the day. So, basically, on behalf of uh, the community, I would like to pass on my appreciation to all concerned for that event. Uh, also, corporate communications. I'd like to mention them in the fact that uh, the staff who worked hard behind the scenes with the lead-up promotion and organising media interviews with council representatives in the United States at the International Water Testing uh, Awards when we won a silver. So they did a lot of work here behind the scenes which we didn't know about, but uh, I think it would have been a big role giving the time difference, etc., etc. So thank you to Corporate Communications for that. And the other one, uh, seasonal increases in rainfall, obviously, at this time or in the early part of the year, and high tides have resulted in large areas of mosquitoes uh, to breed in our region. And I would like to thank the Health and Reg staff uh, for meeting this demand with increased larvae treatments and uh, mosquito misting to keep numbers at bay. Um, so that's it. Thank you, Your Worship. Thanks very much, Councillor Bonham and Chair. Any other speakers? Councillor May, yes. Pretty hard to see you. Are you <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Worship. I, I really just wanted to make a comment around the um, Serena Food Safety Training. I was able to attend that training session and I want to publicly recognise Deb, Debbie Adams, our, our officer that delivered that, and, and all of the staff at the Serena uh, Neighbourhood Centre there that helped her in putting that program together. 27 participants across a number of community-based organisations participated in the training and the way that our officer delivered that training in a very friendly, uh, cooperative and um, informative manner, I had nothing but positive feedback from all of the participants that were there on the evening and I think it's, it's a great um, thing that we did in delivering that, taking it to, to the Serena community. I believe that there is another one planned and um, that one was, was booked out. We had to turn people away. So it's something that is of demand in our community and perhaps something we can look at doing around the, the region as well. But our officer did, did us proud and I just wanted to public acknowledge that. Thank you very much, Councillor May. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion then. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried unanimously. Let's move on. 11.3.2, the Local Disaster Management Group, minutes of the 3rd of February. So this is just the minutes of the last um, structured meeting of the uh, LDMG. We have stood up since then and we are now into our third week of uh, stand up in terms of the LDMG for our region. And so those sorts of the reports will come at our next meeting as we, re we review that. This is fairly well straightforward. Are there any questions? Any questions? Moved by Councillor May, seconded by Councillor Englert. Councillor May? No, I don't think we need to speak. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Let's move on. 11.4.1, the Development Services Monthly Review Report. And um, CEO. Thank you, um, Your Worship. Uh, no LTIs in March, however. The Director has had three. We've also had one long-term one when um, one of our employees um, getting out of a vehicle um, caused some... Uh, damage to the back of their uh, heel. Um, they're off work still, doing some rehabilitation. Uh, the department budget is favourable at the end of March, um, mainly to timing. We believe this directed budget will be probably mostly unaffected by COVID-19 at the end of the year. Serena Sugar Shed was one of our assets that we closed down in late March. However, we have taken the opportunity to continue to sell products online 
and continue the production of alcohol uh, where we can. And I can just say we're just reviewing now, Your Worship, whether we can open the gift shop next week after the restrictions are lifted on Friday. It won't be for the tools, but we're just looking at that now. Uh, the number of development applications at the end of March uh, were about the same as the year before by calendar year. And it's great to see that the cumulative value of operational works by calendar year for 2020 is much higher than the previous three years. Uh, we're not seeing any slowdown at the moment in any of those applications coming through uh, as a result of COVID-19. Uh, and in fact, with our, some of our concessions that we've suggested, uh, we might have seen a little bit of a pickup. Great. Thanks, CEO. Questions for the CEO? Councillor Jones. Thank you, Ben. Um, I just wanted to um, make a comment about the, on, on page 115, the camping analysis. So I see that the Economic Development Program has appointed a consultant, uh, EarthCheck, to um, undertake the Thai region's camping analysis. Um, I'm, I'm keen to get some more info on that if I'm able at some point, not urgent. Um, so only because camping, camping analysis, what sort of information do you want? Well, I'm, I'm just curious around how, how they're going to um, uh, I guess undertake that whole process because, um, you know, with Mackay being a, a known as a destination that certainly offers a lifestyle um, that most Australians love and camping is part of that, just like our fishing strategy, you know, it's camping goes with fishing. So I'm just keen to understand uh, a bit about um, that right, process. Right, so we can take that offline and deliver yeah. that, mate. Yes, see ya. So we did do a briefing with councillors uh, earlier this year, I believe, or might have been late last year, on the scope for that work by the consultant that was signed off. So we can send you the briefing that we gave to councillors with the initial data and what was agreed for the scope of that consultant's work. That uh, Councillor Jane, quick. Thank you. Um, and also, Mayor, just uh, wanted to know whether or not um, the numbers for, on page 120, the numbers for the net free zone voluntary code. Um, I see that, you know, in October there was 527 and then the number in March this year was 542. So my assumption is that the numbers are just going up um, numerically as, as more are added. It's not 542 new people for the month of March that have um, actually uh, signed up for the code voluntary. Is that correct? Mm, CEO. I, I believe we? Councillor Jade's interpretation would be right. I'd, I'd have to chase that up where that comes from and where that's measured from. Um, I'm not sure if the director knows that detail. Director? Uh, no, um, uh, I'd have to check that, but I think that your interpretation is correct. Okay, thank you. Could, could you get back to the Councillor Jones on that, Director? Thanks. Yes. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, who else has questions? Councillor Mann. Yes, so on electronic page 113. I see that we're a trials in full swing to find a solution to desilting of the lagoons, but I just wondered if there's any work commenced on weed control. See ya. Uh, yeah, thanks, Councillor Mann. I'll, I, I think we gave a report, again, I'm not sure it was late last year, I can't, um, on all those different options. Um, I don't, I think we were starting some weed control tests. I'm not sure if COVID-19's impacted that. I'll have to come back to you if that's okay. Yeah, that's but as per that report, we definitely said we were going to go and do something. So I'll chase that up for you. Thank you. Councillor Englert. Oh, thank you, Worship. Um, a couple of questions around safety. First, being, you know, when you refer to bandicoot, you mean large rat like marsupial, yes? <laughs> so, um, is the bandicoot okay? <laughs> uh, we so interviewed, you see, we yeah. interviewed the bandicoot, um, <laughs> and he's assured me he's fine. Okay, cool. A um, bit more of a serious uh, one around safety, Your Worship. Um, so, a member. Oh, sorry. A member of the public um, became aggressive and abusive towards MRC stuff. I'm curious whether that's around them not being satisfied with our policy or more around a customer, perceived customer service issue. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, considering that it's um, in our libraries and that as well, it's becoming quite a common occurrence now with um, the escalation of behaviour, um, some quite threatening um, to our staff. It's something that at a senior level we're working quite heavily on on developing New, um, new initiatives to try to cover that off. We do extra training for our staff that are front line. Um, but it's very, every case is different. It can be someone just doesn't like, you know, a clear outcome versus, um, you know, I know in the libraries a lot of it is more around, you know, potentially substance abuse and other things. So every single case is different. Um, but it's quite, as you know, we've put a security guard on at our Dudley Denny Library a year or so ago. We never wanted to be in that position where we had to have 
a security guard protecting our staff and other patrons, but that's where we are. So um, every case is different. We, um, at the senior group meeting every Tuesday, we go through every single incident for the last week, including every single one of these, to make sure we understand the circumstances and what we might want to do. But it's an escalating problem that we need to deal with. So, Your Worship, is, is the, are there repeat offenders um, and bannings in place, or is, uh, is it basically a new issue every time? Yeah, good question. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, a little bit of both, Councillor Ringett. So there is some repeat offenders that are well known to the police, um, that we have had some bannings done. Uh, what we're going to watch is, it's okay where we've got a security guard at one library, but we don't expect our staff to confront people as they try to walk through a door in other areas as well. So again, it's just part of that whole practice. We're working, there's some new, new cases that somebody has uh, an event and then we never see them again. Um, I will say, particularly in our libraries, um, our health and reg officers and some of our other compliance, when you're going out to a particular resident on certain things, then that's a one-off thing that typically they're not repeat. Uh, but in our libraries, I think we could probably give you a list of a list of names or so who are a lot of repeat, and then you get the odd infrequent event. Worship, last question around safety. Sure. Um, the CEO mentioned himself about people getting out of vehicles and hurting themselves, and, and I, and I realise over, uh, over the last term as well, that was every now and then, and I'm, and I'm sure the last thing the staff want is people who think they know how to get out of vehicles telling them how to get out of vehicles, but what, what do you think is the issue there? Are we changing our equipment? Is it bigger now, or is... So, yeah. Yeah, good question. So, um, very early on in the last term of council, we had an incident where one of our employees stepped out of one of our normal, mm. you know, uh, utes, light vehicle, uh, and we didn't have one, we didn't have mandatory the, the step-down so we made that mandatory that every vehicle we purchased had one of those step down on it. So we've done that. Uh, interestingly, the roller one, um, the actual design of the roller, the one at Youngler, was completely to the standard, just missed the step. And we've actually had, if, if you remember, that we had a contractor through JJ Richards recently, one of their drivers, missed the step and actually has also had some serious head injuries. Um, so it's about just reinforcing. We're talking about putting stickers on the dash to remind people, things like that. Um, the one in parks was, um, this actually didn't necessarily slip, just as that particular employee got out on slightly uneven ground, um, basically snapped the back of their, um, uh, back of their uh, ankle yeah. heel. Um, so that one there, there was nothing wrong with the asset or anything else, it's just the situation dictated that was the outcome. So. Um, we keep an eye on every, say, every single one of them. The design of our gear, we're making sure it's up to the standard or, or exceeds it. Uh, just the last couple of incidents have been, um, probably they've just, there's just been a slight judgment and error or something like that's happened where the asset wasn't bailing. It was just that it, it's just happened. You wish, uh, just as a comment, I've, I've observed um, uh, it with a company in the US that actually has like a buzzer when the doors open. Um, stickers, you know, people, just, it just becomes something else in the view, but when the doors open, there's a buzzer that doesn't go off until the doors closed again. But anyway, just a comment. Mm -hmm. I have another question, Your Worship, but so let someone else questions. go first, if you would like, no? Um, with regards to our, um, you know, getting, um, uh, si uh, which one was it? 67% uh, of approvals this decided in 35 days, but two out of six were issued outside the 35 day period. Uh, exten extensions were granted by the applicant to allow the provision of uh, additional information. So is that, we're looking for more information from them? Um, and, and what sort of information uh, uh, is holding this sort of thing back? CEO. Yeah, I'm sure the director can answer it better than me, but Absolutely. I just will say that um, every case is different and when the timelines are in, the quality of the application and the information provided dictates how quickly we can turn it over. If it's a very well made application, all the information there is we tend to turn them around well in, in, in between our times. Um, however, as you start talking to the applicant about certain things, you realise you need another study. So if the applicant says, I'm happy to extend, other than you have to, the decision needs to be made on a date, um, then that's all fine because both parties are agreeing to extend to, to get to the outcome. So I'm sure the director can give director, you a Director, would example. you be able to expand on uh, this particular report and the numbers? Um, the code accessible applications, there's a, if they're not decided within a certain time, they're deemed to be approved. So 
Um, we do need the applicant's agreement to extend the decision making period and if there are matters that haven't been resolved as part of the application process we commonly do that. Otherwise we're in a position where we essentially either have to refuse the application or issue a preliminary approval. So usually the applicants are quite willing to work with us and extend the decision making period so we can resolve all those issues and issue a full approval with conditions that are acceptable to the applicant. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Bella. Uh, just too quickly, the weed control trial um, won't be provided with the um, details of that trial and the outcomes when they're available. Thank you. Certainly. Um, my question is regarding the um, <coughs> the selling trial um, as far as the collection of the um, leachate, those things happen, but what I'm querying, the, the eight different um, uh, pits or collection of the sediment, are they, like why the eight, is it eight different sites, eight different treatments of the sediment? Just a little bit of, of information regarding that. So, yeah, I understand it's eight different sites. I don't think we've got eight different options, yeah. but I'd have to verify that. That's fine. Can we get back to you with that one? Further questions, Councillor Bella? Councillor Bella Matura. Just follow on from Councillor Bella's uh, question regarding that desilting. The final uh, paragraph in that uh, section says, this process is being rectified, but due to COVID-19, shortage of building supplies is providing is proving to be an issue. What sort of building supplies, and are we experiencing this in other areas? See, yeah. it's the membranes. It's the membrane of the supply that we're struggling to get hold of. Um, and yes, we're starting to see a number of areas struggle, including in capital with gear and so other things. Uh, our sewerage pump station, you'll see in the Marchery forecast in two weeks that we've had to push some capital out because we just can't get some hardware that should have been easy to get hold of. So, yep, we are seeing definitely some impacts. Um, they're coming up every day. Um, are any of them, you know, causing major grief? I, I will say, I didn't mention in the capital report, Your Worship, that something like the Rotary Lookout well, was well on track. We've got a power pole right where um, the view is going to be. Ergon um, has basically advised they won't be coming to look at it before June and that may go out. We're looking at having to demode that whole site for one to two months. There will be a cost and not finish that project. And that's Ergon's decision on their risk, which is fair enough. They can't, they won't put two people in an EWP. So under COVID-19 rules. So we are definitely, you know, we're not going to use COVID-19 as an excuse, I can tell you, but there is definitely some impacts on the organisation now on certain things that we would never have foreshadowed. foreshadowed. Further question, Council Bottom Mature? Well, just, just a little one and the director may be able to answer this one. I notice under our development engineering, uh, there's quite a large number of subdivision plans coming in, either, uh, you know, they're either uh, new or under assessment. Uh, are they for larger subdivisions or just smaller ones? Like sometimes, you know, a subdivision might be just mm -hmm. one into two. Just wanted to know what sort of sizes those director. are. Director. Your Worship. Um, it, I mean, it varies. Uh, we do see a heavy use of the partial release process. So that's where the people will um, lodge a subdivision plan application, a survey plan application that only releases a few lots that they may have contracted, a contract lined up for. Um, so generally, we do sort of um, get them coming in, and I guess, in dribs and drabs, you would say, in that way. Okay, thank you. So, mix. Thank you. Councillor Green. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is in um, following on from Councillor Englert. Given the seriousness of the injuries sustained by the operator, operators missing the step when alighting from their vehicles, is the three points of contact rule, particularly on earth moving and heavy equipment, part of Council's workplace health and safety regulation? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. three points of contact across the whole organisation. Um, and that's something we're reinforcing. I take Councillor England's point about the buzzer and things. We're trying to remind people when they open the door um, just to, to make sure they take, take time when they're getting down, particularly off that bigger yellow fleet, you know, the graders the, and so on. So just take your time, get three points of contact on the way down. And uh, the really uh, serious one that the actual employee at Youngler, uh, one of our civil ops, he, he, he thought he was fine a couple of days after the event, looked like everything was fine. And nine months later, he still got amnesia and, and some uh, some issues that can't, we have, we're still to sort out with him. So, um, yeah, it's just taking your time and, you know, and when you get down, you just miss that last step and you get that jolt and then, unfortunately, in this case, then tumbled. So, uh, yeah, it definitely is, Councillor Green. Thank you. Any further questions? 
Somebody would like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Englert, seconded by Councillor Green. Councillor Englert. Thank you, Worship. It was good to see our natural environment team collaborate with corporate communications staff to produce three videos on how to grow your own food using seed from fruit and vegetables in your fridge. Um, uh, congratulations to Lynette Keir, um, our natural environment project officer, for delivering a couple of really interesting videos. Um, I'm sure I'd like to see um, a few more of those in future. Um, I learned a few things, like you can't use green capsicum for seed. You need lots of space if you're going to uh, grow jack pumpkins. And I think I'll use the seed strip method to grow my tomatoes first. Anyway, as far as applications, a couple of interesting ones. An application at, uh, at Paget uh, proposes the establishment of an educational establishment and for industrial training. Uh, and the facility will be uh, training BHP employees and that'll be good at the end of this uh, situation we're in. In Endergrove, uh, there's an application for civil works uh, for a Coles shopping centre that's going, that would go next to um, Woolworths. Uh, that would be a good outcome for the locals there. We'd have a bit of competition in that area. And uh, in Endergrove, uh, there's an approval that the uh, uh, application has actually been approved for the development of a new residential estate uh, consisting of 22 residential lots uh, under a community management scheme. And uh, with regards to safety, while parks and environment will always be an area that we need to pay considerable attention to uh, due to the very nature of their work, Your Worship, uh, congratulations to the four other departments and development services for maintaining their no lost time status for several years now. Uh, the financial report um, is showing a slight negative variance due to timing associated with the taking of leave, uh, but this will stabilise um, you know, bringing our financials into the green in the long, in, in the long term. Um, as been mentioned before, capital works projects the Queen's Park, at Queen's Park, construction is well underway with a new toilet block and uh, shelter footings bad construction, constructed. Irrigation is almost complete, landscaping is being prepared. Um, in economic and development and tourism, uh, ED has, um, has a partner, partnered with Mackay Tourism and drafted a survey questionnaire for the tourism and events industry to understand the impacts of COVID-19. Um, and that will report back to the economic response group, which has also been formed. And uh, the key actions, well, the economic uh, response group consists of our own ED, um, Greater with Sunday Alliance, Regional Development Australia, Chamber of Commerce, Mackay Tourism. Um, and the key actions uh, will be to report back, well, to, to get out uh, circulation of state and federal government business support assistance to key shareholders, the preparation of the survey material and coordinate the REM plan um, for Mackay Isaac with Sunday Networks. And it would be remiss of me not to mention the mountain bike strategy with the Young Lafin Chatton Mountain Bike Trail Town Feasibility study, study nearing completion. Uh, I believe we are having something to do with that at the end of this month. Um, and uh, the CEO is dis in, still in discussions with authorities and landowners uh, being progress. Uh, usually at this point I would mention the next upcoming event, but unfortunately, Your Worship, um, there's a lot of orange written under all these events that were proposed for the next couple of months. And unfortunately, the next um, next event we can probably look forward to in, in light of any changes to the current situation will be mountain biking uh, in July. So um, hopefully we can get past this and, and, and possibly see a couple of these other uh, otherwise postponed events before then. Thanks, Councillor Englert. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura speaking for. Thank you, Worship. As you know, I'm always looking for positive indicators within our... Uh, community as to how we're tracking and there's a graph on page 108 uh, in relation to the uh, the value of approved operational works mm. and at this stage in March um, we are at nine million dollars and that's approximately two million dollars ahead of uh, the same time last year so to me whilst mm. we are probably facing a few uh, bumps in the road at the moment that is a very positive indicator of, of the state of our uh, economy within our region so just yeah, thought yeah. I'd mention that to that Thanks very much, Councillor Bonaventura. Other speakers? No other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Let's move on to the first of our ECI reports. 11.5.1 is the ECI report for the month for transport and drainage for the review for March. And it's great to see that uh, footbridge at Baxter Drive uh, finally done, which is fantastic. And also, uh, I was really pleased to read to, you know, the, the mobile maintenance work on our playground assets, which is uh, a real great outcome for us. CEO. Thank you. I won't talk much about safety and LTIs, and the one LTI we have had is the one we've spoken about a number of times, the one for our employee at Youngler. 
Uh, the budget is highly favourable at the end of March, however that's mostly timing because a lot of our road and drain maintenance we tend to do after the wet season, so we'll do that in the next three months. Um, uh, great to see and uh, the Capital Works Director did a great job, the Boundary Creek Causeway finally got done. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of back and forth with the residents up there due to weather and everything else, but that's finally been done, so it's well done. Um, and just on your point you just uh, made around the mobile run out of our asset management and getting more data in playgrounds and else, so we are, we're about to make an offer to our preferred candidate for the asset manager, who we expect to start in early July, so um, that'll be someone that uh, we can get in and uh, get, keep going on that initiative. Thanks. CEO. Questions for the CEO? Councillor Mann. Um, have they been redeployed from other areas of council and will there be any increased budget implications? So, yeah. uh, not to my knowledge that we've had any redeployment, Councillor Mayor, but I, can, I will confirm that with you and no, we don't expect there to be a uh, significant material change in the budget. Further questions for the CEO? Councillor Bella. Um, interestingly, it's the same point. My question was that um, uh, here we are getting on top of a backlog with signage maintenance. Has the redeployment of staff actually enabled us, to, while it's certain things are being put behind, has it enabled us to get ahead on other areas? See ya. Yeah, it has, Councillor Bell. I appreciate raising it. Is up. So there's no doubt that, look, we have had a number of employees in our high-risk categories, that, so we haven't got our full workforce mm. um, running at 100% efficiency through the COVID-19. I don't think any organisation would have that. Um, however, we have had there's been an opportunity to catch up in some areas. Um, even something like the MEC that hasn't had any shows, we're brought forward some works that were going to be planned that you try to do works in the MEC around shows, it's virtually impossible, costs you a lot more, a lot more um, work's got to go into the safety and risk of the patrons versus now when it's empty. So we're bringing some stuff forward. Uh, so the library, Gordon White Library, um, we were planning to replace the carpet very difficult to do that when the library's running a lot of the time, so we've brought it forward because it's empty. So we're taking a lot of advantage of trying to bring things forward. Uh, I've made it clear to my directors that action, outstanding action items and corrective actions and so on, we should be on top of in some of those areas that aren't running. So we are definitely not sitting around, we're trying to take every opportunity. So there is some positives in some areas where we're going to catch us on some things that we wouldn't have normally had a chance to do. Thank you. Councillor Bonaventura. Just in real page, top of page 31, 131, I note that uh, we're going to, uh, where plans are being formulated to remove a damaged bridge at the end of Ellamang Street. And it says that this bridge was provided as an emergency access point to Mackay Airport, who have recently advised they no longer require it for this purpose. And when you look at it on the map, it only, that's the only place it can go. So my question is, is the Mackay Airport uh, contributing to the removal costs of this bridge? So you yeah. go. No. Um, so when they did want it, Councillor Bonaventura, for access, they no longer need it, so they don't care if it stays there or not. But we've had other issues and other complaints around it, so we've taken it out. At what cost? Thank Director. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, it's operational cost, so I think it's... I don't have the exact cost. I'd have to get up uh, maybe ten to 15000 so did Mackay Airport pay for any of the installation of that bridge or have we... <coughs> well, the bridge has been there a long time. It's been there a long time, Councillor, so uh, I have no idea, CEO. So, yeah. I, I think it's on our asset register, so I, I don't think they paid anything for it. I'll oh, sorry, Director might have Director. It. Through your worship, I mean, any, any assets that cross our uh, drainage easement, we take responsibility for. So irrespective of whether it was a donated asset or contrib contributed, I'm not sure which one. We've had it on our asset register, so it effectively falls back to us to maintain. Yeah. Your Worship, if we could just get the cost on that, it'd be appreciated. Certainly, uh, if we'll ask the Director to circulate that. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? No further questions, then we'd like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Mann moves, seconded by Councillor Angler. Councillor Mann. Um, so, no, no loss from the injury in March, and given the number of activities and interactions in this program, Minimal incidents recorded, so thank you to staff for continuing to focus on health and safety. Uh, underspends were recorded in three programs due to wet weather, um, but work in civil ops, particularly on unsealed road maintenance, will ramp up with the continued dry weather. And that's always really important too, leading up to the crushing, to make sure the roads are in really good condition. Um, really good to see the signage and installation, sorry, signage and installation maintenance and pothole repairs made up the 500, sorry, made up 512 of the work orders completed in March. 
that's a really high number, so it's really good to see that we've got an extra crew for signage and, and um, to help the signage and maintenance team catch up. Um, a lot of work being done in terms of asset management with data cleansing of stormwater and roads data remaining a high priority. Um, and given we rely on, on this data for asset valuation, it's really, really important. And I think the improvements will continue to um, provide benefits, including operational um, efficiencies and more accurate details. So, so it's um, certainly well appreciated um, that, with what they're doing. Um, I'm happy to move the report. Thank you. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Batter. Um, I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to highlight, and that was the idea of the question of the CEO, the fact that um, this has become a very agile organisation. And as we uh, explored during the question, while there's been some um, severe impacts in certain areas, um, there are other areas in um, our council where we've actually started to, to get rid of the backlog that's ha that has occurred. That can only occur in an organisation, as I said, that is agile with its workforce. Um, I'd like to congratulate the CEO and our directors and understaff, but also the workforce that have willingly taken up the opportunity to do different things. Um, I know there's always a pushback um, to any form of change, but we've seen, I believe, really positive change for quite a while now. Um, as a matter of fact, in our water areas and things like that, uh, I think it's been wonderful. The other thing I'd like to mention is that uh, the gravel road um, business here with the submission and the work done, um, I think it's been wonderful and the community feedback down my way and whatever has been outstanding uh, compared to what it was previously. Um, I'd just like to, um, to say that we should do everything we can to maintain the standard we've attained um, for as long as we possibly can. Uh, this standard will enable our maintenance costs to be uh, less than they have been, I believe, in the long term. Um, so I think it's a very good thing. And thanks very much to the crews working on those roads. Thanks, Councillor Butler. Other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura speaking for? Yes, Your Worship. I'd just like to uh, continue to speak a little bit about the Boundary Creek Causeway on Doherty's Road. And this work forms part of the uh, North Queensland and Far North Queensland Monsoon Trough Road Restoration Works. Uh, as we all know, Your Worship, residents were left stranded over 12 months ago when this causeway failed during flooding. And while residents, after a lot of work, are now happy with the renewal of this causeway, uh, it points to other issues. And I believe we have many older causeways that are nearing end of life and will require upgrades in the not too distant future. And councillors, we need to bear this in mind to start to put money aside in future budgets. Similar to the uh, storm water and sewer as we've done the relining. Uh, because it's one of those assets you don't see uh, until it fails. So we need to look at an upgrade program. Uh, this will take a lot of time. It's not something that can be done overnight. Otherwise, we will be faced with uh, high cost of emergency repairs when a failure does occur. So I just want uh, councillors to bear that in mind. Thank you, Your Worship. Thanks, Councillor Bonamagero. Other speakers? Councillor May. Just, just like to highlight, and I, and I think it is worth highlighting the completion of the beach restoration under the Cyclone Debbie um, assessment and, and councillors will know that this has been um, a two to three year project and from the, the time that the cyclone hit, working through all of the um, consultation with the community, all of the reports that we had in uh, what was required to restore our beaches from that cyclonic event and to be here today when that is absolutely completed and just a bit of a sign off waiting from QRA, I think we've reached a milestone so it's worth Indeed. noting. Indeed. Thank you very much, Councillor May. All the speakers, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. ECI Water Services Monthly Review for March, CEO. Yeah, you know, I'm breaking record, but safety has been good in this department for the year. Um, there's nothing stopping the second best water in the world. We keep on going, regardless of COVID-19. Um, budget is slightly unfavourable at the end of March. Um, this is mainly in the sewerage area. It's around our sewage treatment plants and our asset management after the downer handover. Um, this department has only <coughs> been uh, hindered slightly as a result of COVID-19. Um, so uh, the business continuity plan that the director and the staff have got in place, we were ready and willing and capable of running those plants remotely if, uh, if we needed to in a lockdown. So 
that, that was all very well tested and ready to go. So that was a very good exercise. Great to see 96% of all our work orders were completed within the target time in March. Uh, the number of new water leaks and cease leaks has been three months in a row. There's a downward trend on that, which is good. Uh, my water registrations are up to 15,730, and I'm sure it's something we'll continue to focus on. Um, and it's great to see most of our storage uh, capacity dams and so on are 100% this time of year. Thank you, CEO. Questions for the CEO? Gus Langley. Um, the, CEO, Your Worship, the, the CEO made reference to the financials there, in particular the, um, the septic water revenue being under budget. Um, just a bit more detail on that and also the wages and material and services over budget. So the under budget for... Yeah, so the CEO mentioned uh, the, the under budget uh, was in relation to the handover. So yeah, I'll get the director to any okay, director. wages. Uh, yeah, through your worship. Um, so most of the issue with the treatment has been transition out. So we've had to do continue to do uh, rehab works. So the contract has got responsibility for those, but we've had to go and do a lot of shutdowns. So that's added to some of the cost. Uh, in relation to some of the materials and services, some of it's still a, a timing issue depending on how we accrue that coming through. So uh, we normally have a large spend in period 13, the end of, end of June that comes through as well. So generally we're on forecast except for that sewerage area that's sort of travelling over at the moment. Thank you, Worship. The second stage of your question? Uh, the, the, I think it was covered. You just answered that around the wages. Okay. Yep. Further questions? Councillor Bonamatura. Uh, page 152, Your Worship. Um, there's been a appears to be a large increase in the um, backflow prevention device registrations, and I think that's very, very good. So, is there a background behind why that's increased uh, for, the, for the month of March compared to to uh, other months? So yeah, yeah, Councillor Bonamatura, thank you very much. Actually, at the bottom of that graph, it actually explains it. It's Oscare came online, 27 of the 37. It's actually a paragraph at the bottom that actually explains that. Um, so there's 37 new devices were registered. Of, of those, 27 were from Oscare, the new facility. It's just below the graph. It's actually in the March summary line. Okay, yes, righto. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. No further questions? Councillor Engley. Thank you, Worship. Um, the CEO mentioned uh, achieving 15,730 in the my H2O. I can't find it now, but the report actually says there's 40 new registrations to 15,459. I read somewhere that the actual target was 15,730, which seems a bit arbitrary. So is it just a percentage increase per month target as we keep rising that we're, that we're following there? So yeah. Basically, yes. So it's just, yeah. we've got a target. We obviously want to exceed that. So there's a target and what you simply do is say, well, what's the target divided by 12 over a year rather than one month we're going to put 80 and next month zero. It's yeah. just a flat line calculation across. Cool, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Have other questions? I'll put the motion. Hasn't been moved. Hasn't been moved. You're right. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Okay, would somebody like to move the report's adoption, please? Councillor England. Is there a seconder? Do I have to? <laughs> Councillor Hassan seconds. Okay. Thank you. Councillor England. Thank you, Worship. As the CEO mentioned, there's been no lost time injuries recorded, recorded for March, but also if you look at their, um, their total summary, it's been uh, since 2018. We haven't seen a lost time injury in that department, so that's uh, really awesome. What I found interesting um, in this report, uh, something I probably haven't noticed before within the plumbing applications area, um, the regulatory time frame to have a, a plumbing um, application approved is 20 business days, but as an organisation we've had um, we've had it at five. So that, I think that's a really great target to have. But, but what we've actually been able to do is approve all applications within one day. So that's a really good effort by our staff as well. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, uh, and uh, it was good to... Oh, I missed the question, Your Worship. Oh. It's too late. So, yeah, it's too late, so I'll just have to make the comment. Um, there was uh, a, a media uh, response that thanked residents for binning their wet wipes and not pulling them down the toilet, because it's my understanding that they don't fall apart like toilet paper and clog up our system, so to speak. So um, they, they worked on a little media thing, which was bin the wipes to avoid blocked pipes, which I thought was interesting. And I wanted to ask a question about that, but I'll have to wait till next time. Um, it, within the re results of their customer service um, survey, a, a quite excellent 
um, with you know 97.6 percent approval and, and some of the comments in there uh, from residents uh, receiving the service include same day can't beat that within three hours of request helpful and polite prompt good job fast efficient friendly council workers were very helpful and pleasant while doing their job professionally thank you to what job well done keep up the good work um, the leak itself is rectified but I'm sure oh, I didn't need to talk about that one because that's too difficult. Everyone was kind, helpful and efficient, couldn't be happier with the service. So that's a really good reflection on our, on our staff and organisation. And just mention lastly that um, besides the fact that we have uh, the uh, best, uh, second best water in the world from one of our areas, that, that all of our drinking water across the whole region uh, has been in compliance for some time now. So overall, a really good effort from our people in water and um, keep up with the work. Thank you very much, Council England. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried unanimously. Let's move on then. So the ECI report for waste. CEO. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, this, this department's had an excellent safety record for a long time. Um, our waste area activities have been basically un unaffected by COVID. All our bins got picked up through Easter and everything else. And you'll notice in there that the number of missed bins at 18 for March was an excellent result versus the medium, so mm. the, uh, contractors are doing a great job. Um, the waste budget is slightly unfavourable at the end of March, however that's the good news. Uh, <laughs> the bad news is you'll notice that we're 2,000 tonnes less going to Hogan's Pocket for the corresponding last year, mm. and once we see April, May and June as a result of COVID-19, that's going to reduce. So you'll talk, we'll talk about this in two weeks at the March re-forecast, where we're talking about over a million dollars down in revenue on the waste side. Um, uh, I'm sure Councillor Bonadieu will be happy that the number of waste vouchers presented at this reporting period at 29.5% was the highest we've seen for five years. So I'm um, not sure why. Maybe that's all at home because of COVID-19 in the last two weeks of March. We're not sure. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great re redemption rate. Thanks, CEO. Questions for the CEO? Councillor May. Um, just in relation to our not-for-profit organisations and their total waste disposal, in, in the past, this has been problematic for us, and, and I'm just um, asking a question around the, the COVID-19 implications for that, and all of the charities have removed their bins from the streets, and you have to now take, um, if you are taking goods at all to those places, to be able to drop them off in, in person. Um, so I'm just wondering, is this an opportunity for our staff to be working with those organisations to actually not put those bins back and to be on the front foot in having that conversation with them at this time? Very good point. So you go. Uh, yeah, no, it's a good point, <coughs> Councillor May. Um, I know we've worked with several other groups previously and one in particular we've really reduced, we've worked with them to reduce the number of bins, one of the bigger ones. Um, I'll, we'll pass that through to our manager of waste to, to see what other opportunities there are. Mm -hmm. um, and um, thank you for raising. I'm sure someone's going to raise that one of the um, parties on that group have already spent more than their allocation. But just to remind everybody, um, you can only we'll only give that uh, the, the value to the agreed amount. Yep. So if somebody spent thirteen thousand, the cap's eleven. We only paying for eleven. Um, but um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll take that on board. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's a good point. Further questions, Councillor England. Thank you, Worship. Um, in the overview, the, CR, uh, the report refers to the drop in um, tonnages, especially in commercial, a result in a significant decrease in gate fees. We've had a discussion about this previously, but I asked the question, um, do, do, so where's this, where's this stuff going, or is it not being produced? And is the Proserpine waste facility within the same sector as us? Do they get charged as much as we do in the levy, or is that... Is, Basically, I'm asking, is this stuff going to cross a point? Right. So, yeah. I think there was a question uh, last week that was asked was. about, could we go and check um, go and check other regions to see if they've had the same impact? Because the commercial tonnage is the one yep. that's well down, Councillor England. Um, and we believe it's as a result of uh, the levy coming in. We didn't expect it, but that's what's happened. Um, I think we were asked last week to go away and see if that's consistent with other areas. We believe it will be. Uh, people have just come up with other ways to to put their commercial waste somewhere else through selling it to someone else or whatever, rather than pay the levy. And the levy is consistently applied, to my knowledge, across Queensland. So the number's the number. And the basic tenet of your question is where is it going? Mm. I don't think we know that yet. Uh, but that's part of uh, the investigative process. 
Councillor Seymour, you got a question? Yeah, so no, just no question. It's just like I think mainly with this uh, waste, I think mainly a lot of it is, I think, working on a job site yourself, people are more compliant now. So, you know, you've got AJK with concrete, um, you're limiting when your clean ups are on that there's not a percentage of dirt going in bins. So, I think a lot of it is just management on job sites themselves. So. And it was, a, it was a hard hit down you know, to $75 for any job site. So, I think a lot of it was taken on board by contractors and that when the kite come in. So. Mm. Well, it, uh, if that's an outcome, mm. then that's excellent. It's not good for our money, oh, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's excellent for the, for the uh, environment. So, yeah. further question, Councillor Englert? No, all good. Councillor Bonamatura. No, I was just going to respond to uh, Councillor May in relation to bins. Uh, working closely with St Vincent de Paul or Vinnies as I do, <coughs> they have removed all but one of their bins, and that was uh, prior to COVID-19, and they will not uh, be reinstating those bins outside. So mm. they have already voluntarily agreed that uh, they will not do that. Um, due to an issue where they actually have video footage of someone actually climbing into mm. the bin, to uh, remove clothing from inside the bin, so in the middle of the middle of the night. So, yes, okay. scary. Sort well, of that's, video, that's a good idea. Okay. No comment on dump vouchers, Councillor Bonaventure. I'll do that in the. Uh, in, uh, oh right, when you move. Right, okay, very good. Further questions? Somebody like to move? Then the report's adoption. So Councillor May moves. Seconded by Councillor May. Man. Councillor May. Mays and mans. <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Worship. Look, a, a lot of it has already been highlighted, but I, I just wanted to, to highlight around the COVID-19 and the impact that that has on our uh, people at working and, and our contractors. And I think our management team has done an excellent job in implementing all of the necessary uh, requirements to adhere with all of the regulations and the social isolation and, and distancing at our facilities. So that, that's no easy task. And this, this particular uh, part of our business is probably one of the, the major ones where that interface with community is still going on, but under um, you know, the, the new arrangements. So the, the, the team have done an excellent job there. It is of cons well. It's a good outcome if, um, as we've just heard, if, if the sites of commercial waste is being managed and minimised. Um, it's certainly something that we're going to have to be looking at in our budgets and that impact on us. The the amount of um, waste going to landfill and particularly to Hogan's Pocket, if that reduces, it might be a cost to us now, but into the future that will give our landfill extra life. So I think that that can only be a good thing. Yeah. And our contractor for our material recovery centre continues to, to do a really fantastic job in minimising the amount that goes to landfill and still managing to capture markets for our recyclables. So I think uh, overall a really good report. Thanks very much, Councillor May. Speaker against? Any other speakers? Councillor Bella. Um, I am very tempted to talk about dump vouchers, but I'll leave that to Councillor Bonaventura. Um, I just wanted to highlight the point once again, as we usually have once every 12 months or so, we have um, a bit of community concern about, well not concern, but agitating for curbside pickups, green waste pickups and that sort of thing. Now we've been through the process a few times. I would like to take the opportunity to say while there is merit and uh, in listening to people, um, the system we have, um, I believe, works particularly well. People that create waste pay for disposal of that waste uh, with curbside pickups, as we saw during um, the cyclone, post cyclone recovery, the cost is astronomical. Um, and people that don't have the sort of yards that require uh, or, or produce that sort of waste in a cyclone or any other time. Uh, I believe are unfairly impacted by, through their rates, by a curbside pickup. We also have the problem with people uh, rorting the system, so we have uh, waste that shouldn't be there, people putting it out um, after the pickup's gone on, items that staff can't particularly lift, so the equipment um, consideration is massive on a curbside pickup. Uh, I had a conversation with one of the other councillors about uh, the weighing of waste. Um, the cost of wave bridges, which we've gone through before, uh, is uh, considerable. And to do it at all of our uh, stations 
would be uh, very restrictive and to be honest to do it at one and not the other would be unfair. Um, it is very tough and I acknowledge how tough it is for staff at the gate of um, our dump facilities where people want discretion. Discretion is, is very difficult and thus our rules are, and I've got no problem with us continuing to um, review those rules. Um, Council Bonaventura goes through it uh, ad infinitum, um, trying to figure out a better way and I encourage that. However, um, it's really hard. You know, we're the people that make those decisions. We shouldn't be placing that dis decision making onus upon staff at the gate. So I currently think our system is as good as we can have it. Um, I would request that Council Bonaventura continue with his search for a better system. Um, and I've just taken this, this opportunity just to highlight some of the problems that we face in implementing some of the things that people might request or think are, um, are beneficial. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bella. Councillor Bonaventura. Thank you, Your Worship. And yes, I will speak about dump vouchers. Look, Your Worship, I was impressed uh, with the dump voucher usage. That has gone up to 44,000, approximately 44,000. And this is good to see. It means the residents are using these to keep their properties tight <coughs> at a time that suits them. And they are at any of our 11 regional transfer stations or our two green waste facilities. Your Worship, here's the plug. I will, at some stage through this term, I will be looking for support from councillors to make improvements to the dump voucher system because I believe we can do that. I'd like to back up uh, Councillor May's uh, uh, speech in relation to Hogan's Pocket. Now, it has been showing visible signs of decline since the introduction of, of the state waste levy. It's very clear. And this is a positive sign that we're already moving to lowering our waste landfill, which is something the government is pushing. And I agree with uh, Councillor Seymour. Uh, in, the, in the bad old days, and I was there as an earth-moving contractor, where uh, the builder would say, just pick all that up, dirt, topsoil, concrete, all in the bin, going straight to the uh, transfer station. They are now working out how to save money themselves and that is an excellent result and unfortunately as you mentioned your worship there is a negative in relation to the income we receive to operate and maintain our waste facilities so i issue the challenge to the ceo and to the director to come up with innovative ways to address this without increasing the cost to the rate payer. thank you your worship thanks councillor bonaventura other speakers no other speakers i'll put the motion those in favor any against motion's carried thank you Move on to the org services financial report 11.6.1. CEO. Thank you, Your Worship. Again, safety in this department has been excellent all year. Um, the COVID 19 response and management has been coordinated through our, throughout this department, um, but involving everyone around Council. And I don't want to single anybody out, but I just would like to say the Manager of Governance and Safety, Joe Papalata, has done a sensational job yeah. of leading that group and coordinating and giving recommendations to myself and the senior team in what was and still is a very, very fluid situation. So I think it's done a fantastic job. Uh, all our aquatic facilities were closed on the 25th of March. The budget is tracking OK in this department and uh, we will be unfavourable at the end of the year around some of the fixed costs around some of our facilities under our contract. I would also like to mention that the response of our IS team, um, we've had people working at home, we're doing things that we've never done before to make sure we can continue to run a business in a lockdown and they've stepped up and, and done a great job and all those trials and everything else has been done with, um, you know, all, all through our processes and they've done a great job as well. Um, it's great to see 16 new apprentices and trainees were welcomed in March. Uh, we have two intakes, everybody, so that's one half of our intake. Um, our shared service centre is, manage, is managing the COVID-19 crisis well. Our KPIs are quite good. You will notice the grade of service dropped briefly. Um, we had four staff shortages in that period. Uh, but apart from that, uh, they've managed the situation, continue to service the calls in our community well during this time. And as I think I've mentioned before, and we have placed a number of our, uh, our vacant roles on hold at the moment due to COVID-19 until we understand what we're doing with our budgets and everything else. Thank you, CEO, and can I concur with the CEO's uh, summary there of the impact, particularly on this directorate. I mean, when, when you think about it, uh, people in culture, uh, corporate governance, etc., a lot of it, a lot of the impact of the COVID-19 results that we've seen so far are, are really being felt through corporate governance and, uh, and this directorate. And the way that the staff here 
in particular in terms of money management have uh, stepped up to the plate in a very difficult time is very, very commendable. So uh, on behalf of the Council, congratulations to the Director and all of the staff as well. Questions for the CEO? Councillor Jones. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, under um, 11.6.1, um, 9.2 land and tenure, on page 200, um, under the heading general leases, uh, the second one from the bottom is selectability use of park area for community garden. Um, I'd just like to say that um, selectability being a not-for-profit uh, organisation that works with people of all abilities, um, to be able to have a community garden is a great project. Um, but we do have very little green community space in our CBD and so I'm hoping that there will still be space for office workers and families to enjoy um, the area as well and I'm wondering um, through through the chair uh, CEO do you know how much space of the park will be leased? CEO? I have no idea we'll have to get that information sorry. We'll send that out to you councillor. Thank you. Any further questions? Any further questions? Somebody would like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Mann. Seconded by Councillor Engler. Councillor Mann. since 2017 2018, so that's a fantastic result. Minimal incidents, and I congratulate everybody for their continued focus on health and safety and making sure that all our workers uh, are able to do their jobs safely. Um, in the spirit of continual learning, it was really good to see safety activities, including our staff attending um, meetings with other businesses in Mackay, but also in central Queensland. I think it's really important to, for some lessons learned by other organisations. Um, as the CEO mentioned, custom service KPIs mostly continue to be met or exceeded. And these are very difficult conditions that our, our frontline staff have been working under, including uh, the fact that there were staff vacancies, local government elections and COVID-19 inquiries. So they've had a really difficult time and they've done it really well. Um, there was an average of 40, 436 calls a day that were answered by our staff and it represents an increase of 1,000 calls since the same period last year. So when you consider they'll full staff down, that's a fantastic result. And again, I, th I think they do it really well and certainly the customer feedback indicates they've done it really well as well. Um, Council's mindful of spending locally and uh, accordingly our spend for local spend for March in the Mackay region made up um, $6,410,053. Uh, and also for the regional spend, which is the, the rock area, um, 40853 And that adds up substantially when you consider the year-to-date the, um, -year figures. So it's really pleasing to see that a lot of our money is staying in the region. Um, budgets for all areas tracking well. Um, I did notice too, when we, when we talked about um, impacts on staff, property services would have had a lot of impacts as well because their cleaning regime would have to, be, have, to have been substantially altered. So. They've done a fantastic job given the number of lease matters that they also uh, undertook during the, the month as well. So I'd like to congratulate them and their responsiveness as well. In Thank this. you very much, Councillor Mann. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura. Speaking for. Yes, Your Worship. Just uh, there's a, of particular interest for a couple of graphs in the report. And the first one, uh, following on from Councillor Mann, is in relation to the call centre. Uh, where their customer satisfaction survey results are performing well above the three-year average. Now, to achieve this for a month would be good, but to keep ahead of the curve consistently since August last year is an exceptional result, and I'd like the director to uh, pass on my appreciation to staff concern. The second graph um, is the one in relation to the uh, MRC top five pathway requests for March, and it shows a huge increase in the request to repair or replace wheelie bins. 504 this month versus 182 in the January report on, on, that we received in Council. The rise is attributed to the Mackay Regional Council's Facebook post about giving the residents the options and telling them what they can do. That's right. This really brings home the power of our Facebook and how widely and often it is viewed. This is a very powerful tool to get messages out there to the public and I doubt whether any other form of advertising would have the same result. 
And just one final one. Um, uh, I note uh, under significant risks, uh, the director has mentioned the reduction in revenue from waste disposal uh, area is a concern, and I've already uh, spoken on that, so I won't speak any further. But I'm also pleased to see the continuing, uh, or, or we are continuing to see a lower trend in rate arrears during our rating cycles. And this is mainly due to the improved in-house collection methods following the introduction of an SMS reminders for ratepayers. Mm. And this is a good result. And I thank the staff for their proactive approach in this area. So thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bonaventura. Other speakers? No other speakers. I'll put the motion those in favour. Any against? The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Let's move on. 11.6.2. This is uh, a lease of land for the Mackay Amateur Basketball Association Incorporated. Fairly well straightforward. Uh, this is a standard lease. This used to belong to the uh, DNRM. They wanted to pass it on to us. Are there any questions? Councillor Anglis? Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Directly about that, have I forgotten something or is this just the in-house process that's just occurred, the, the transfer of this land to us and when did it happen? So, yeah. yeah so the original agreement was between them and the, and the state and now they've asked them to do it. We need to do the lease directly. So this is a new arrangement. So, Your Worship, we now own the land? This, well, as all uh, all state land, we become the, uh, the administrators, yeah. administrators of the land and we're entitled to actually then issue a lease for it. This is a standard lease. Can I may say as well, there was an error in your pack. We've forgotten basketball in the um, actual... It's in the resolution. Motion, but it's up on the draw. Up on the, um, so there's a word missing from your pack and uh, the word is basketball. It's now in the resolution. Um, as you'll see... Council approve a new lease of the Mackay Amateur Basketball Incorporation. No further questions? Somebody would like to move the adoption of this report? Councillor Englert moves, seconded by Councillor Bonaventura. Councillor Englert. Thank you, Worship. Um, as you mentioned, this is, this is for 10 years. There's been uh, great consultation on the issue. There's no cost to Council and it's a great outcome for Council and our community. Thank you very much. Any further speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. It's, we've got now uh, some road closures. Four road closures. 11.6.3 um, is the permanent road closure for uh, reserve land adjoining lot six at Farley Dumbledon Road at Dumbledon. Council offers no objection. Are there any questions around this? Somebody would like to move the adoption? Councillor Bonaventura moves, seconded by Councillor Mann. Councillor Bonaventura. Uh, simply, Your Worship, that uh, definitely offer no objection. This is a piece of land that uh, has, will never ever be used for road, so it's better off being transferred, so there no objection. Thank you very much. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried. 11.6.4, the permanent road closure for a road reserve is joining Lot 1 on that uh, plan in Sydney Street. Once again, the Council offers no objection to this. Questions? Somebody would like to move its adoption? Councillor Englert moves, Councillor Mann seconds. Councillor Englert? No, thank you, Mayor. It's straightforward. Put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. Permanent road closure for a road reserve uh, adjoining lot 5 on that plan at Webster's Road at Gargat. Once again, Council offers no objection to this. Questions? Somebody would like to move the adoption. Councillor Mann moves, seconded by. Councillor Green? Councillor Mann? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried. Thank you. And the permanent road closure for uh, a road reserve adjoining Lot 1 on that plan and the Marion Can Drive at Freshwater Point. Uh, once again, councillor has, uh, councillor has no objection to this. Questions? Moved by Councillor May, seconded by Councillor Mann. Councillor May? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Let's move on. 11.6.7 is the strategic financial report for the month of March. CEO. I'll be extremely quick. Um, at the end of March, we're looking really good. The 2.1 million um, uh, surplus at the end of March. Wish we could stop the year there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing better than the year-to-date budget, but the ramifications of the shutdown um, are yet to be felt, obviously. Are there questions? No questions? Somebody move the adoption of, of this report, please. Councillor Mann, seconded by. Councillor Hassan, Councillor Mann. 
Thank you, Your Worship. I'm not going to say too much either. This obviously is, is just going to be a, a moving feast, if you like, and I know that our CEO and our staff have it well in hand. I think we just need to, while we're trying to plan for the future, still we need to sit back and wait, wait and see the implications. So I know that it's well under control. Thank you. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. 11.6.8 is the operational plan for the third quarter for the CEO. Um, CEO. Uh, thank you. Just for the new councillors, so we obviously sign off an operational plan. We'll be bringing the one draft for next year forward, so every quarter we give you an update. Um, uh, I think it was Councillor Kemp a couple of years ago asked for, rather than reading through what was it used to be back then, 120 pages, could we put a summary up front on each quarter of the areas that we're behind target? And that's been a great addition where you can still obviously go and read everything, but you get the idea of the ones that are behind, so that's obviously in there. Um, I'll just note, this is at the end of March, very minimal impact in this quarter for January, February, March of COVID-19. Uh, we have made a comment in there that we do expect a number of KPIs and initiatives, e.g. anything to do with the MEC, Serena Sugar Shed, or anything where you don't, won't have any revenue or any visitation due to COVID-19 will obviously be impacted in the next quarter. Um, you'll notice of the total of 90 actions, 20 are complete, 50 remain on target. The 13 that are below target are all mentioned there. Some of those are out by a little bit, some are out by a lot. Uh, seven did not need reporting, um, and we've given all those reasons. Uh, and as I say, we will not be using COVID-19 as an excuse. Uh, however, there'll be no doubt that there's a number of these initiatives that will be impacted um, as a result, particularly the front-facing ones from the MEC, um, some of our community lifestyle and economic development KPIs. Thank you, CEO. Questions? No questions for the CEO? Somebody would like to move then the uh, quarterly ops plan be adopted for the third quarter. <coughs> Councillor Englert moves, seconded by Councillor Green. Councillor Englert. Thank you, Richard. As the uh, CEO mentioned directly from the report, uh, it lists um, uh, 50 actions on target and uh, seven that don't require the status. Um, and, and even though he says it's not an excuse, there, are, there is a reality around the COVID-19 and the fact that particularly in economic development, community lifestyle and the MEC, the majority of targets relating to events are in attendance and no one's attending anything at the moment. Um, obviously, this the good thing about this report is it's a, it's, it's a much better way uh, of, of getting the information across quickly, and it's released to the, to the public this way as well, which I think is, is great for them to understand uh, some of the achievements. And I'll just list quickly, um, uh, within, within each of our departments, community and client services over this period um, had the 2020 Local Disaster Management Plan uh, endorsed by the Local Disaster Management Group and uh, as uh, previously mentioned by Councillor Bob Ventura, the 2020 Sports Expo was held in February and saw 125 storeholders uh, promote their organisations with about 8,500 people attending. Uh, we've had uh, more than 180 new citizens welcomed in cer citizenship ceremonies in this quarter and in development services we've had um, planning for the future Northern Beaches Community Hub continuing. Uh, we hosted the first ever AFLW Premiership season on, on March 6 between Gold Coast Suns and Geelong Cats uh, with uh, a crowd of 2,800 attending that. And in February for the first, uh, we had a nat our native plant giveaway and 2,524 plants were given to 631 ratepayers. Within Capital Works, an in-principle approval was received to implement a proprietary estimating program and this will allow a work breakdown structure to enable the required estimating accuracy. And of course, the hospital bridge was completed along with um, Camilleri Street Park. Uh, engineering commercial infrastructure, water from Marion water treatment was second best in the world. Vegetation trimming was like, undertaken in the bridge road drain to optimise drain flow capacity and uh, revegetation work adjacent to both groins at St Helens Beach has been completed. Within organisational services, we had the Mackay Regional Aquatic Strategy adopted, arrangements to respond to COVID-19 emergency in a planned and coordinated manner were established and managed. Um, a new three-year business plan and associated 12-month action plan were developed across the organisation and business continuity plans were reviewed with a specific focus on responding to the pandemic threat. Your Worship, this is an excellent report um, that the community will have access to. It's not a perfect report, but a, a bit quite reasonable uh, considering factors uh, affecting the region at this time. Thanks very much, Councillor Englert. Speaker against? Any other speakers? No speakers. I will put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried unanimously. Thank you, uh, Directors. Thanks, CEO. That's the report.
We normally only have a couple of reports coming to uh, a, an ordinary meeting in council, but we had to do the catch up this time and we had all of the directors present their reports, which was um, fantastic. So thank you. Let's move on. Agenda item 12 is the receipt of petitions 12.1 is a petition for <coughs> the installation of traffic calmers in Temple Lane and the waters of Dooralee Development. Uh, the recommendation from the officers is that this be received and referred to the CEO. Are there questions? No further questions? Would you like to move, Councillor Bonaventura? Seconded by Councillor Mann. Councillor Bonaventura. Thank you, Worship. Um, as this petition meets the requirements as per our standing orders, uh, I'd like to move that the petition be received and referred to the Chief Executive Officer for a report to be prepared for consideration of Council which investigates the issue identified within the petition and that the principal petitioner be advised of council determination. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventure. You're a speaker against. Are there any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. There's no tenders. There's no consideration of notified... Oh, there is consideration of notified <laughs> motion. Sorry. 14.1, uh, uh, a notified motion from um, Councillor Mann. Councillor Mann, you wanted to make a change? I did want to make a change. So, acknowledging that um, I didn't, there was a lack of information for councillors, I wish to remove point three, um, which reads that also the Mackay Regional Council would like the state government to review the possibility of local councils conducting the next LGA election. So, it, definitely acknowledging there wasn't yeah. enough information, I do wish to remove that, but I wish to retain the first two points. Okay, so it's your motion until it gets to Council, so I'm happy to accept that. Uh, and so that becomes the, um, the notified motion now without item three. You've got, got a question, Councillor oh, I just have a question for you, Mr Mayor. I'm wondering if, and I acknowledge the work Councillor Mann's done on this, I uh, would just like to request that you consider splitting the other two clauses, uh, I find uh, merit, very strong merit in the second clause. Um, just the process of the first one I'd have difficulty with, um, and I'd like to make decision on both of those on their merits. As I said, second one, very happy with. Okay. So it's uh, your motion until it gets to uh, seconded, so what would you like to do? I'd like to leave the two together. Okay. Yeah. All right, so there, there's the notified motion now without uh, item three in your, in your agenda. Pax, is there a seconder to that motion? Councillor May. Okay, so it's moved by Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor May. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Look, I feel very strongly the ECQ let us down in a couple of areas, including online voting, um, but I feel we were substantially let down in terms of how quickly the results of the 2020 election were available via the online system. So on the night of the election, the system crashed um, and uh, information on account status was unavailable. Um, from Sunday <coughs> the 29th of March to Wednesday the 1st of April, there were no updates despite locally the account was still pro pro um, pro progressing. Um, locally, our account was completed within a week and I cannot speak highly enough of the returning officer and all his staff here. Um, I think they managed it very well, considering they had impacts too from staff not being able to come because of COVID-19, etc. Um, look, I refer to 2016 when our electronic account was trialled here and the poll was declared um, with, within about two weeks, not quite two weeks after the election. Um, updates were posted daily and for anybody that chose to scrutiny here, um, you could actually see or ask for the data to be refreshed so it gave you a really good sense of what was going on. But largely too, the um, ECQ website worked well that time. Um, and given there was three mayoral candidates at that time and 37 councillor candidates, that was a big job. So this time there was 21 councillor candidates, no mayoral candidate, um, no, sorry, no mayoral election, um, and there was no electronic counting and the poll wasn't declared until two weeks and three days after the election, again despite the fact that what was done locally worked really well. I just think when the community really needed stability and a council formed quickly, um, because of daily changes, um, I think we needed a result quickly and I don't think that that actually happened. I think the system of, of, of updates failed us um, and I think that delayed maybe the poll being declared too. And to my second point, uh, the cost advised by the ECQ in, two, in 2019, we'll see the ratepayers of the region billed approximately $788,000, which is over double the cost of the 2016 election. 
I note the reference that the state government subsidised the 2012 and the 2016 elections, so the increase in costs could be partly attributed to that. Taking on board that point, I think it would be remiss of us not to question how those costs were arrived at, given the large increase. Um, and I think, at the very least, a detailed breakdown of those costs would be required rather than being quoted as one lump sum. It is my understanding that some councils may be questioning the performance of the ECQ uh, as well, some other councils, based on the costs, and it may be something that LGAQ will address in the future. Um, so I think my motion really is about trying to ensure the processes are improved, and I'm seeking everybody's support for, for this motion. Thank you very much, Councillor Mann. Councillor Bella, if you wanted to split it out, you'd have to move an amendment uh, to, uh, to the motion now, and we'd have to debate that amendment. I would like to move that amendment in that um, I believe that, as I said earlier, that the, um, the first has merit, however the process I believe should be different. Um, the second one is definitely of merit. So I'd like to move the amendment that the um, notified motion be split into two motions and debated separately. Okay, so a seconder? Councillor Bonaventura? Councillor Bella? <coughs> The reason I move the amendment is that I believe that there's a very definite need, and I could fully support uh, the second clause that we object strongly to the increased cost uh, imposed, no rate imposed by ECQ for this election. I think that we could um, uh, object to it, hopefully get it looked into. The first, however, to call on the state government as a council enables the state government to pick us off one at a time. I actually think, even though I've been sceptical in the past, this is actually a job for LGAQ. And our first step should be to actually um, liaise with LGAQ and see if we can form a... Uh, there's 77 councils here. If we can get an alliance together to actually put this forward um, to, um, to the state government. Um, the Premier is talking about conducting a, uh, a review later on. I'm sceptical of that sort of thing as well. I'm actually not against this in essence. I actually want it to succeed, and for it to succeed, I believe it needs to be done in a slightly different fashion. Um, as I said, I don't want us picked off, you know, just as one, one group of 77. I want us to being together and to put forward uh, something uh, that will have to be taken notice of. Thanks very much, Councillor Bella. Speaker against? Councillor May. Your Worship, I fully understand um, what's, what's being put forward here today and I, I appreciate the different views, but i just make one point in, in speaking against this. Not every council was impacted by the performance of the ECQ. So I haven't done the sums personally, but. It, all, not all councils were delayed in results being put up onto the website. There were many councils that, that had their results up on a daily basis. There were many councils that were declared way before our council election was declared. So I think to, to bundle that all up and, and put it into um, the LGAQ's hands is probably a little bit premature. We're, we're talking about the, the implications on Mackay Regional Council. Okay, so we're debating the amendment. Councillors, so is the speaker for the amendment? Councillor Bonaventura. Yeah, simply, and I certainly agree with Councillor May. Um, there were some councils, and quite a few councils, that were probably quite happy with this. And so maybe the issue is that it was uh, a natural occurrence that our uh, vote or our result of our vote was delayed simply because of those declaration votes. So I think we may be within the normal bounds of what it should take. And for that reason, I would like to see that separated because I think it is an LGAQ action if you want to take it there and let uh, the bulk of councils, of those 77 councils, decide at the motion whether they wanted to, to push that. But independently, I don't believe we should be uh, asking the state government for that in review. Certainly, uh, so I would like to see it split on those grounds and happy to vote for uh, part two that uh, Councillor Mann has moved. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Speaker against? Are there are other speakers. Councillor Jones speaking for the amendment. Um, yes, yes, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I actually, um, 
I'm a little bit troubled with um, the whole process that's before us at the moment. Um, however, I do uh, believe that the um, what what um, Councillor Bella uh, and Councillor Mann are trying to do are, are fairly similar, as Councillor ben Bella has said. Um, I would like to see the two items split based on the fact that it opens robust and good debate, and that's basically why I'd like to see them split. Okay, thank you. Speaker against? No other speakers? Councillor Bella, do you wish to exercise a right of reply here? Okay. So we're debating the amendment, and uh, the motion will be that the amendment, that the original motion be split into two. That, that's the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against the amendment? The amendment's carried. Sorry, can we just get the yep. against, please? Yeah. So those against the amendment? So just could we have... Uh, yeah. The amendment is carried. So now we are dealing with two motions. And the first one is that the Mackay Regional Council calls on the State Government to investigate the performance of the ECQ in this year's local government election. Are you okay, Pam? Are you, you're up to date? Okay. Now, just bear in mind, we don't have uh, the facility to be able to whack that straight on the, uh, on the screen straight away, but we've got the first one up there. Now, at the risk of um, furthering the robust debate, uh, is there... Are we debating this, or does anybody want to... Do you want to change that one, Councillor Bella, in terms of an amendment that the Mackay Regional Council calls on the LGAQ to investigate the performance of... OK, we haven't got it yet, have we? Well, I'll just, I'll just foreshadow that that's an opportunity for you. So, Councillor Mann moves that we... Uh, this is the first round of this, this split motion that the Mackay Regional Council calls on the State Government to investigate the performance of the ECQ Brisbane in this year's local government election. Seconded by Councillor May. Councillor Mann. So, again, Your Worship, the intent of my motion was for us, as an organisation, to say how we felt to the State Government I understand there might be other councils that are concerned. I understand the LGAQ may well want to take this up in the future, but I'm talking about how it affected this council and this council only. Um, yeah, again, like I said, there may be other, there may be other councils, but this is this is how it affected our council, and that's why I put it up as I did. Right. Okay. Councillor Bella, um, I would like to move that amendment on this. So you wish uh, to amend this particular? Motion? Yes. Yeah. That Mackay Regional Council calls on the LGAQ to can sort of canvas councils uh, with regard to petitioning state government to investigate the performance. Da da da. So I don't think Pam got that. No. Just yeah. can you say that again, Councillor Bella? That Mackay Regional Council calls on the LGAQ. Calls on the LGAQ to can canvas other councils um, regarding their willingness to petition the state government to investigate. Uh, Councillor Bella, I, I wouldn't accept that as an amendment. That changes that particular mm -hmm. motion altogether. An amendment can't change the motion altogether. Okay. The, amend the amendment... Withdraw. The amendment, if, if you move that instead of the, the State Government, the Mackay Regional Council calls on the LGAQ, I mean, the whole intent of the motion is probably the same. But if you're, you know, petitioning other councils, except that really changes the whole context of the, of the motion. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't accept that as an amendment. I'll withdraw. Okay. Right, so that amendment is withdrawn. Speaker against. So we're back to the original one. But the Mackay Regional Council calls on, on the state government to investigate. Oh, it's gone. Okay, so there it is, to investigate the performance of the, of the ECQ Brisbane in this year's local government election. Speaker against. Councillor Bonaventura. Your Worship, and I've already stated it when we talked about splitting the motion, I just believe that the majority of what happened was within the bounds of uh, what they needed to do. I don't believe there was anything that was untoward or anything that was slow. Yes, there were a couple of days at the start where uh, numbers didn't come up, but after that, it went according to plan. So I don't have an issue with that. So I believe I cannot support this motion because I believe overall ECQ <coughs> did a reasonable job 
under the circumstances. They too were faced with COVID issues in Brisbane, staff shortages, um, et cetera, et cetera. So they faced the same issues we faced up here, only in my opinion, a lot worse. They also had uh, you know, a larger, large number of councils to cover, as well as two, two state by-elections at the very same time. So I'm sorry, I cannot support uh, that uh, motion as put up there. Okay, speaker four. Councillor Engel. Thank you, Wish it. Um, this is Councillor Mann's motion. Um, she has a right to ask the question if she sees fit. If someone wants to change that to a certain extent, they can put their own notified motion. You want the LGAQ involved? Put in a notified motion for the next meeting. But this is the way Councillor Mann has, it wants to ask the question. Now, I just voted to split this because I couldn't see a problem with that. What's the problem with just splitting it? Okay, if that's what they want. So I voted for that. I don't see a problem with picking up the phone and asking the state government a question about something. So what's the problem with the question is, 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 my, is my, my question, Your Worship. So I can't see a problem with splitting this vote. I can't see a problem with asking this question of the state government. If someone else wants to get the LGAQ involved, bring a notified motion to this place. But I support the motion as it is. So thank you, Councillor Engler. Can I just tell uh, councillors that whilst the notified motion may be uh, owned by a councillor when it comes to the table, as soon as it is seconded, it becomes the property of this meeting. And, uh, and it can be dealt with as any normal motion. So thank you very much, Councillor Englert. Now, a speaker uh, against. Councillor Ballard. The reason I'm speaking against this is that I actually want to give the concept every possible opportunity to succeed. And I believe the concept will be much better served by having a number of councils presenting a, a united front and asking for that investigation. The way to do that, I believe, is through what is already provided to us by the LGAQ. So it's not a matter of, I don't want the question asked. I want the question, when it's asked, to be regarded with the import that it deserves. Thus, I will be voting against this motion and I would encourage Councillor Mann or whichever other councillor um, to bring a notified motion to the next meeting um, asking for LGAQ to canvas other councils, uh, get that group together, that united front, to call on the state government to do uh, the review into that performance. I also actually agree with Councillor Bonaventura that there were extenuating circumstances. Uh, it was very difficult. Um, there was anecdotally talk of um, postal votes being actually delivered to people after the closure date for the return of postal votes. So there were any number of things, and that's Australia Post. It's just an indicator of the problems faced in this election. However, once again, I'm not against the concept. I'm merely against the way we're going about it, and I would like to ensure that it gets through. Thank you. <laughs> Speaker Paul, Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, a few points that I wanted to make, and, and firstly around the performance of ECQ, and I, I want to put on the record here today that we're absolutely not talking about the local people that, that were here. The returning officer and his staff at a local level went, moved heaven and earth to get those votes counted, the delay occurred after they had sent the results to the ECQ. The lack of the results being published on the ECQ website was inherent. There was the very first day, there was a crash of the website. You can understand that, that you think things go wrong. The next day, on the Sunday, when the votes were counted and, and they were sent off to ECQ, they were put up, they'd fix their problem. We did not get another result until Wednesday. In, a, in a, an, a, an election held by the, the people, run by the state, you would think if it was a federal or state election, MPs would have been screaming blue murder that three days they went without getting a result. So I think the performance of ECQ is, is what's in question here. And I also think, are they going to give us a discount in the price that they charged us? If we had a contractor doing this job, if they were contracting the council and the performance was not being met, I'd want to reduce the price, but I bet you life we don't get a reduction in the cost to council. What we have seen, and has been stated previously, 
is a drastic increase in cost to council to the running of this election. So I think that as a council, as Mackay Regional Council, we have every right to ask the state to investigate this going forward. And I think also that stems to this argument, we had the Premier calling for exactly that, that there will be an inquiry into this. And I think Mackay Regional Council, we've been affected. We need to put our hand up and say, yes, we agree with that. Let's look into this. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker, for, um, where are we? Against. Speaker against. <laughs> Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I agree with um, Councillor May that the local ECQ did a, did a great job um, under the circumstances. And I'm not here to debate the actual devil in the detail around what did or didn't happen uh, down in Brisbane. But I am going to reiterate what um, Councillor May just said, and that is that the Premier was appalled by the um, the ECQ and the way that the um, election was undertaken um, and offering to launch that investigation. Um, so therefore I believe that we are actually putting the cart before the horse. We're asking uh, for this investigation, yet the Premier has already said she's going to do the investigation. So um, I think that um, while um, I thank Councillor Mann for actually um, you know, bringing it forward and being on the front foot with it, um, I just think that we're we should be probably moving this motion in about six months' time, not actually right now, because we need to allow the Premier to do the work that she needs to do. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker against. Are there any others? Speaker four. Speaker four. Councillor Green, yes. <laughs> Your Worship. Uh, thank you. First of all, I welcome the chance to, to debate this. Um, respectfully to Councillors Bonaventure and Bella, I believe that your argument is based around the assumptions of the number and type of problems faced by the ECQ at a state level and an assumption that there would be enough other councils to form a united alliance uh, to take this concern forward. I think there's great merit in advocating for ourselves uh, to add weight to the Premier's investigation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Speaker against. Are there any other speakers? Can I get another go there? No. <laughs> I, I, yes, you minutes. probably haven't done, but I'll come back to you. Councillor Mann, you have to stop. I, I just really wanted to so, sum up. So, so hang on. Yeah. Do you want to exercise your right of reply? Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. Councillor Anglet. Thank you, Worship. You've got about a minute left. Yeah, good. It won't take that long. This state government might not be here in six months, um, and so we should be on the front foot. And we're asking a question. Um, what's, what's, well, who's getting hurt from doing that? Okay. Are there other speakers? No other speakers, just to sum up, Councillor Mayor. I do. So, I don't, I'm only reiterating points that other, other councillors have made, but the Premier herself said that they had one job, and this, this was the result for us. I'm only talking about us and how it affected us, and I believe that we have every right to, to ask the State Government to investigate, regardless of what, whether or not they're going to investigate it. I still believe that there is merit to asking them to investigate so that this doesn't happen again. Thank you very much, Councillor Mayor. Well, councillors, uh, thank you for that debate and I'll put the motion in just a moment, but I really can't see a problem in, in firing a shot across the, uh, the bounds of the state government uh, at, at this stage. Um, and I, but I also would like to see us lead some sort of a motion at the LGAQ conference this year, uh, based around this context. So with those words, can I put the motion? Now we're debating that the Mackay Regional Council calls on the State Government to investigate the performance of ECQ Brisbane at this year's local government election. Those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. And those against are? Just keep your hands up for those That's against. Right. So we get actually, you've got them? Okay, thank you. Now let's move on to the second one. That the Mackay Regional Council objects strongly to the increased costs imposed on our ratepayers by ECQ at this election. Moved by Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Jones. Thank you. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Um, <coughs> to, um, to, to almost more, more over double in cost is a bit of a stretch, really, I think, regardless of the fact whether the state says there was subsidies given to us in two previous elections and that's why, the, well, that's why it didn't cost as much. I just think... On behalf of our ratepayers, we need to be questioning why it's cost this much. And nothing other than a detailed breakdown, I think, would be suitable. Um, yeah, so, uh, just, just reiterate, I think, it, it, is, it is our job to question what the costs are. And um, that's why, when we do receive the bill, 
I would like to see what it actually did cost us. Thank you very much, Councillor Mann. Speaker against? Are there any other speakers? Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to um, uh, say thank you again for uh, Councillor Mann to bring this up. I was really <coughs> appalled to find out the amount of money it's cost for this election. Um, and um, knowing that you know costs of previous elections have been much lower than that. Um, and yes, we are in a time uh, where we need to try and do the best we can for our community regarding finances and our budget. And, uh, and I just thank Councillor Mann for putting this uh, motion forward. Thank you very much. There's no other speakers then. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried unanimously. Thank you. 14.2 is a notified motion on councillor remuneration from Councillor May. Councillor May, you move. Is there a second? Seconded by Councillor Jones. Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I, I just felt that in this um, particularly trying time for, for council that, um, and our community that we need to show leadership in our community to, to not take on the pay increase that is um, down to us automatically, as, as it explains in the report. Um, you actually have to refuse it, to, otherwise you just get it automatically. So the, the word unanimous in, in the motion is, is there because um, I, I'm not abreast of council's um, financial implications and what that might mean. So I don't want to be jeopardising any personal um, expenditure or, or financials on, on any other councillor. So if, if the motion is not carried um, unanimously, I, I will accept that result and, and that, that is okay. But I am calling upon all of the councillors here today to, to um, use our, this opportunity to, to show leadership in our community to not take on this pay rise. There, there will be serious budget implications, as we've heard all throughout today's um, meeting, on our council uh, to cope with the COVID-19 uh, impact. And I think it's up to us to set the right example. Thank you very much. Speaker against? Are there any other speakers? Councillor Jones? Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, we've been in office for a very short time and I'm, uh, I think I've been fairly consistent so far with uh, my theme and that is that um, you know, being able to um, uh, do this today, um, hopefully with that unanimous vote, uh, is certainly um, showing our community that we, we are trying to do the best we can with um, uh, many parts of our budget and again I thank uh, Councillor May for uh, bringing this notified motion forward so that we could actually um, achieve this for our community. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Bonaventure, you're speaking for the motion. motion Your thank you. Uh, Your Worship, I too would like to support the motion. And I also, uh, on top of that, look forward to when uh, Councillor Jones brings a notified motion in relation to our provision of facilities, because I believe we can also look at some savings in that area to add uh, to this should it be passed today. But I look forward to that coming forward as well, Your Worship. Thank you. Other speakers? No other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Right. We have no public participation today. It's really late business from any councillors. Councillor Bella. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to once again plug the COVID Safe app. Um, we actually have people within our community that are, and a lot closer than we think, that are directly associated with what I can only say is the absolute horror of Great Britain and the US and various other countries. Um, I had a discussion with one only this morning. Um, they are very thankful that we have got uh, in front of, uh, of the game on this. Um, they're also quite keen for us to be able to relax some of the, um, the limits that have been placed in our society and on business. Um, the one thing that is absolutely essential is if we do relax those limits, if we do see a surge, that we can shut it down as quick as possible and get back to business once again. So ultimately, um, I believe that this COVID safe app is both safe and is absolutely essential. Um, and I once again would encourage people to, uh, and I'd like to thank the councillors here that have already done it, I really would. Um, I'd like to encourage everyone to, uh, to consider installing the app. Thank you, thank you very much. 
Councillor Bella. Any other late business? Councillor Mayor. Yeah. Uh, I would like to echo Councillor um, Bella's comments. I have downloaded the app as well, and I see no reason not to. If I come in contact with anybody that has been in contact, either has COVID-19 or has been in contact, I want to know. I want to be tested, and the only way that, that, that any restriction is going to be lifted is if we know what we're dealing with and we can respond to it quickly. So I too would encourage everybody to download it. I've heard the, the you know, comments that it's not safe People, I don't, I'm not sure if people realise, being on social media, that a lot more stuff can be tracked than what, can be, that, than what might be tracked with this app. So I certainly would encourage everybody Thank you very well. much. Any further late business? No further late business? Councillors, we have uh, five items in our confidential area. I, I suggest that we probably move into confidential today just for the benefit of uh, new councillors. These are fairly perfunctory sort of uh, reports to council that might not necessarily uh, make us move in, but in terms of uh, questioning around some of these standard reports, I think uh, we should probably move into confidential to consider them at this meeting. Would somebody like to move? Councillor Bella moves that uh, the meeting be closed to the public. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried. So thank you very much. And thank you to our uh, online audience. We'll consider the next items in, uh, in confidence.
So it's been moved that we uh, reopen the meeting to the public and our on, on online audience is now back. So councillors, we have uh, now to adopt the five items that we considered in the confidential mode of council. The audit committee minutes of the 13th of February. Somebody would like to move? Councillor Mann moves. Councillor Englert seconds. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried unanimously. The draft minutes of the Priority Development Area Advisory Committee of the 11th of February. Somebody would like to move? Councillor Englert moves. Councillor Green seconds. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried. The Legal Services Monthly Report for March 2020. Somebody would like to move its adoption. Councillor Bonaventura seconded by Councillor Hassan. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. The approved concessions under the Facilitating Development Policy for the Bakai Region in March. Somebody would like to move? Councillor Mann moves. Seconded by. Councillor May. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. And 17.5, the approved sponsorship under the Invest Mackay Events and Conference Attraction Program for March. Moved by Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Green. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried. Thank you very much, councillors. Thanks, CEO. Thank you, directors. And thank you to our online audience. I declare the meeting closed.